leaving Mandua a relatively straight blue to take the uh, her first hoop of the tournament. Well, our first hoop. Well, our first hoop of the tournament at least, yes. There's a bit of action being going on around us. Unfortunately, these the players got underway before the live stream started, but you haven't missed a lot. So, so here we go. Very Egyptian, lovely Egyptian style. And try and gain advantage at hoop two now with a good run through this hoop. Oh, very nice. good. Very nice indeed. That's a lovely shot. Lovely control for the pace as well. Now it looks as though we're using quadways. On the, for this tournament, is that right? Yes, we are using quadways. They do provide a bit more of a challenge um, to the players. A little bit, a little bit more difficult to run. Um, there is rumours that it's down to the paint coating or not having paint on on the hoops, but they do they do provide more of a challenge. So you know, at this level and this standard. And is that more of a challenge from an angle? Right. Def yeah, definitely more of a challenge okay. from an angle. Um, they do reject quite often. Uh, you do find some players try to sort of bully them through the hoops and sort of force that way through, but sometimes being a little bit more sort of smooth with your shots, they do seem to accept just that little bit better. I was glided past the peg. That was glided she could have done with that finishing runnable really, with um, Jane in sort of in control of the blue there, but hoop still anybody's at this stage. Now are we getting any comments through, Stu? Um, asking to introduce ourselves because the bike oh, was turned that's a good off. Idea. Well, I'm Keith Ayton. Uh, by no means a golf croquet expert, but luckily I'm sitting next to Stuart M. Smith, England International. Who oh, in, is in no way a golf croquet expert. <laughs> <laughs> You're more of an expert than I am. Oh. It's this, as we just discussed, or whether the mic was on at the time, but this is where um, quad ways becomes the challenge. Mandur is going to try a little angled shot at the hoop here, which is never a guarantee on quad ways. Unfortunately, it just hit the, uh, hit the near wire. Yeah, yeah. near yeah. wire. So, this gives gives Jane Morrison the uh, the chance with red, relatively straight, probably five yards out, four yards out maybe, or a bit closer even. I'm going to call it three yards. Oh, I'll give you three yards. Yeah. Didn't quite hit that one centrally. Going for a little roll in, stop yellow having a go as well. Oh, Unfortunately, just overdone overrun, it. yes. Okay. Yeah. Let's take a little while to get used to the pace of the lawn. So. Oh, these lawns have been cut since yesterday. They have. So you, get your, you come down, you do your practice, and then you come down and they've been cut again and <laughs> it's slightly different again. Well, they've had a warm up. But they, they? they have. Although it was very brief on this lawn, they were very quick starting. That's unlucky. So we've sort of. So who's got the advantage now, then, Stu? Jane's had two goes uh, without has, making it. Um, at this point, depending on the shot, I mean, I'd be more tempted to sort of try and get my blue in front by creating distance with red. So playing through red uh, and moving blue into in front of the hoop as much as possible. But that way, give blue black some chance again at an advantage at this hoop. Otherwise, you're just going to be a little clearance battle. Otherwise, for the next rotation or two, which is exactly what she's done. So that should help okay. her gain advantage at this hoop now. 
Now, to me, it doesn't look as though blue's runnable necessarily from there. No, that is the unfortunate part, that the blue hasn't run on far enough, but... Pretty good. For, that, that for, is, that's a good position. That is pretty good, but we're in the same position again here now where I think Mandu will do the same job. So she'll just clear, stop shot through red. She she's still got both balls in front. And the advantage with playing the, the previous ball is that that red's not coming in for three shots time. So yeah. she's got a chance of manipulating the other balls until that comes back in. Nice so this time red black has got position. Yes. Nice distance on the clearance with the red as well. So how would you Jane's opting to um, would you clear black here some of the time? I think if blue wasn't runnable there and it certainly didn't look runnable, I'd have worried about clearing black. Just because red's so far Just away. purely because red's so far away. Yeah. She's now got to stop, hit black to stop Mundo again, a, a, another go at the hoop. Now what do we know about these players, Stu? Who are we looking at here? Well, we have um, Noah Mundo, is currently Egyptian, I think she's seventh seed for this tournament, currently Egyptian rank five, um, um, I understand. Uh -huh. um, only relatively new to the game, so they've been playing it since 2016. Um, but it's already won the Egyptian League a couple of times and the Egyptian Cup a couple of times, I think, as well. In time, she's never played out of Egypt, according to right. the information. So it's the first time, certainly first time at this level, first time we're playing in this tournament. She's opted not to take the hoop on here. Which I'll be quite surprised at. I thought she'd have had a go then. Um, and our other opponent here is um, Jane Morrison, who, um, despite uh, playing for Ireland, she does actually live in Scotland and won the Scottish um, GC Championships a couple of times as well herself. So Jane's playing off a, a D grade of 2000. 2022, I think, to be precise. Um, Mundu is playing off 2300 and something. So oh, quite a big difference. Then. There is a big difference in that uh, in their rankings. But sometimes you know, a bit of tactical nous and you can wipe out the D grade difference. And the odd shot. And the odd there. shot. I mean, Jane's certainly capable. I've played a bit of GC. Yeah. How did you find it? I mean, I know you're predominantly AC, but how have you... Did you enjoy playing the GC side of it? Uh, yes, yeah, and I, I very much enjoyed watching the World Championship last year from, from uh, here at Southwick. Yes, yeah. I watched uh, every day on the live stream and was really getting into it. Yeah, no, I really do enjoy it. I mean, I don't play a lot of AC myself. I have started to take it on because I feel like I'm a bit left out not playing it, really. So I've started dabbling a little bit, but just how much time I'll be able to put into it. But I have, in, I have enjoyed so far. Well, then again, that's a, a nice, simple shot, but a nice little shot from under, just to sort of hide that blue from the red, to stop red. Um, Obviously, seeing and clearing blue, knowing that this shot so is the key shot. What was for this Jane season. trying to do there? I think she was trying to hamper or block black clearing yellow, because the, the uh, clearance okay. on yellow Over. now yeah. should determine the hoop. Really, it's going to put an awful lot of pressure on Jane Double. to clear that blue. Yeah, lovely shot, lovely shot, straight in the middle. So Jane presumably could have tried. Clearing black. She could have turned and tried to clear black but and put again. Obviously, if you miss distance. it, you're miles away. You are. You are. And um, blue's presumably not guaranteed, is it? It's not guaranteed. It does look at a slight angle. Obviously, we're right in the corner here, so it's quite difficult to see, but it does appear that it's it's, it's more than runnable. Again, at least yours are more. That's 
that's a good good stroke. Unfortunately, she's just passed that one by. So we'll see now how confident Mandura is to take a slightly angled hoop. But have you played much on the quad race hoops at all? I don't think I've ever actually played with them, no. no. Um, I was in New Zealand when they first appeared and there was a quadway who set up oh, for okay. us to have a go at, but not actually in, uh, on a lawn. Okay. You see, these are the, these are the ones that uh, catch you out, a little sort of angled on it. So that's 2 0 to Mandua. Key now is the position to 3 to really put the pressure on. Yeah, that looks a pretty good shot, Stu. Now there's a, I've got a, yeah, a beginner's question for you. Okay. It looks like to me as though Red will need clearing. Um, and she she just put black in, even though it's probably five yards closer to red than yellow is, uh, than blue is. Yes. Um, is this a, some is there play, a reason for that? Some players have. Uh, the idea that if they're so comfortable and happy with their clearances and how well they're hitting their rokes, then they are happy to tr what we call trust the second ball. Okay. So she's put the black in as the threat. I mean, it's not it's probably close enough to the red to hamper the backswing, but it's also puts the pressure on the hoop run, and she's quite confident she's then going to go and move the red with the blue. She does. Yes, she does. So it's just having that confidence in your clearance. It's worth putting that first ball in as a, as a threatening ball to sort of put your opponent off or make it sort of a little bit more nerve wracking, if you like, for running the hoop knowing that your opponent's there to mop up if you miss. But if you're that confident with your clearances, you know, that's fine. If your clearances are slightly off, it's worth having two goes at it. Yeah, you know, okay. Give yourself that second go. So you'll find a lot of players that are confident will put that first ball in and not worry about it too much because they know they're going to hit you with the second one. If they start missing a few clearances, they'll have a, they'll have a pop with both balls. Well, presumably this, this is going to be an attempted clearance. Yes, yes, yeah, she's, she's got, she's to, got to move it here. Nice, that's a good okay. shot. That's a good shot, kept herself nice and close. She couldn't afford to sort of cut that and end up miles away because again she'd lose con any control of the hoop. But she's yeah, well Red's, Red's yeah. controlling the position in front of the yeah, hoop. She's now, well it, within. So. She's back in this hoop by hitting the middle of that black. Deep no, position. That's quite a long position. Yeah, gone for the deep What's position. What's the thinking there? Well, golf players will tend to, again, if they're confident, good, confident players, they'll tend to run. They're happy to have a go at hoop and run a hoop from that sort of distance. Uh, and obviously, it creates more distance for the clearance for the opposition. So, if Jane moves it, she's only moving it to the back boundary and probably not getting it far enough away. And it does tempt the less experienced players to just try and drop a block in between the hoop, your ball and the hoop as well. So it sort of it sort of picks potentially picks weaknesses and styles of play with your opposition as well. Right. Just to see what they if they try and their little positional shots here and there. They it does tempt people to try and play a block between black and hoop. Which is what Jane's done. Yeah, which is exactly what Jane's done. Or tried to do it. Yeah. Um, no. And if you, but it takes a lot to get that right, especially across the lawn. Blue was an attempted block. 
over red at flight. It is, but yeah. looks a bit funny. Yeah. It's hard to tell from here what, uh, what Jane can actually see. That's nice. That's nice. Um, she could have done with cutting it so it was hidden behind the blue to stop um, right. Mando uh, being able to see the yellow, but equally it's not the easiest of clearances. I believe this will be a clearance on yellow rather than hoop. It wouldn't make sense really with the yellow where it is. Again. But you do get oh, you do get players do that. Get, with I remember listening to Chris Clark last year who talked about a, a possible double hoop and ball. Yes. Yeah. So if, if they are that close, you aim to sort of clip the left hand side of the yellow, knowing that if you miss you run in the hoop. Um, it's a bit of a brave thing to go for because you realistically want to play one or the other. But I would suggest this is a clearance on yellow is the plan. Now she's asking to move that in uh, because asking, of the, yeah. the fringe of the, of the grass. Yeah, it's just asking for a bit in, of relief. Change in height. So yes, yeah. yeah, just asking for a bit of relief to keep us. Keep but you only move. Steady. You only move the black. You don't move yellow? Uh, you don't. Um, Is it, do you ever move yellow? Or? You would move yellow. Um, I, I believe it's six yards. Okay. So if it's under six yards, you can move the the object ball the same distance, or the target ball the same distance. I could be corrected there, but I'm sure it's six yards. That's, That's a lovely great shot. shot. The only downfall with that. Actually, there is no downfall with that. My apologies. Because <laughs> yellow's playing next, so yellow's got to come back. And so there is no downfall. Those are the ones you really want to hit centrally, presumably. Oh, Otherwise, yes. blacks yeah, off down there. Just kept herself nice and controlled, you know, just, just in case um, Jane Morrison happens to hit blue here, she's more than capable of doing. Um, oh no, she's not, not sure gone. she's gone for it. No, she's not gone for the clearance. Oh, Ooh. oh, 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 oh. oh hmm. If she's attempted to hit the back of the hoop there to stop the hoop run, that's a hell of an effort. I'm not 100% sure that that was the attention, it might have been for the block, it was travelling for the block. Yeah, it looked like uh, just a a longish position shot. It, it that did, one. it did. Oh. You okay. know, the good thing with that is it did sort of um, stop Mum do a, perhaps having a go at the hoop that she perhaps would have done when the yellow sat there. Well, it's harder to run, isn't it, with the ball just the it other side? It is harder to run because it'll also, you don't get as much distance down the lawn. Uh, and she might be, might be aiming that uh, Jane might just come in the back of the hoop and if she then gets the jump shot in she'll tie yellow up for the next hoop as well. So it's, it's very uh, very important that Jane hits or takes out blue here. Needs to stay close by. Oh that was interesting. That's actually through hoop. the hoop. She's actually got a hoop. Right? <laughs> now, some of us naively might call that lucky, Stu. I'm just putting that down to absolute brilliance. I think <laughs> okay. she meant all of that. <laughs> but no, it's a hell of a result. I mean, having said that, it's not easy for Red to take part in hoop four straight away, is it? No. No, that's the unfortunate, the downside of that shot, but I don't think but she's, she's too got a point on the board. I don't think she's too worried about that. I really don't think at this point. And she almost looks like she's about to play the wrong ball. But no, she's not. Okay. Yeah, she's just having a look just to checking. see what she can <laughs> see. Yeah. That would have tested me if she played the wrong ball, I have to say. <laughs> Looks like a clearance. Or a hoop run. Oof. I think that possibly was a clearance. It's hard to tell how close that was to the black from the angle we have here, but I would suggest that that was probably a go at the black. But something again, 
somebody watching online would probably notice it was miles away. It was probably a go at the hoop. Now, is there anybody out there who's actually listening to a word we're saying? Okay, well, I, I, I think the scoreboard is currently up, but just for those, if it's not currently up yet, um, it's now a is 2 1 up um, against Jane Morrison at this point with Mandua playing blue-black. And I'd say she's in control of hoop four. Yeah, she's in, definitely in control of hoop four at this now point. Now is this, what is this? Is this I a, think this might be a little promotion on blue, pushing blue further in. Okay. Yes, yeah. And wired from yellow, hopefully. If she's got it right, right, if she's got it right, wired from yellow as well would be a massive bonus. That should have been what she was aiming for, but whether that's what she achieved, we'll soon find out. Yeah. 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 It was a nice shot though, got um, got the clearance on the blue, didn't particularly move it particularly far, meaning that Mamdu will just put the ball straight back in. But um, it, it's still nice to see Jane Morrison's actually hitting, so that should uh, bode well. The problem for Jane's got, as I say, it, is she's going to have to keep clearing for a while. She, she is in the position that, uh, that for that it's going to be a bit of a clearance game for her. Well, um, unless she goes in off the hoop again. Yeah. <laughs> but the, oh, no, that was, it, unfortunately that she time. missed there. And the key for that is obviously sensible clearances is the biggest help there because you will need to keep your balls closer by. If you just keep clearing and going further, your opponent just puts their ball straight back in. Um, so you need to get closer and closer with your clearances, which obviously centre ball helps. But now I've noticed the Egyptian players quite often check the hoop, the firmness of the hoop, presumably. Why do they do that? Because they often then, if they don't like it, they get the referee out to hammer it in. Yes. And I, I would have thought a firmer hoop is harder to run. But no, firm, certainly in the Egyptian style, the, the firmer hoop is, is a lot easier to run. Really? Yes, because you don't get the. the it helps with the spin of the ball, where the, where the hoop's not moving, the ball's spinning and the hoop stays still and sort of helps drag it through in the way they strike the ball. That's Again, lovely one. hoop, lovely hoop. There's a slight chance of, you know, if you don't quite get full wire, or full, if you hit wire and on the loose hoop, you can sort of shake all over the place, but a, a, a firm hoop, you'll find that they do sort of spin, you get a bit of extra top spin and they sort of drag themselves through. Okay. Now Jane's picked up uh, red here, so you can explain to me and possibly the other listener. <laughs> uh, we have 94 well, listeners do we? at the moment. Wow. Yeah, well, so. Now what we need to know is where they all come from. <laughs> yes, if anybody wants to put in about, the chat where they're actually from. It's 10 o'clock here, isn't it? It is. Uh, yes, exactly 10 It's 10 o'clock here, so now I'll look this up, it's noon in Cairo. Yeah, so if you want to let us know where you're from, that would be helpful and it would be nice, and, uh, it's going nice to be for us. 7 in the evening in Australia, in, uh, well, east coast of Australia. I'm, I'm glad you're so up on your world clocks. Well, it's going to be 9 o'clock in, in New Zealand. That's all right, 9 o'clock in New Zealand. It's a nice evening watch. Glass of And it's still, bed, still bedtime in the States. <laughs> That's a nice positional shot there from Yellow. Uh, it's going to need moving, so Mamdu is going to have to have a go at moving this one. Oh, no. No, but that has surprised me. Just blocked it. This went for the block. but Very so good block, to it. be fair. <laughs> and it's, it looks spot on from here. Now, a few moments ago, was it, I was uh, teeing you up to explain oh, the offside so the rule. Oh, the offside rule. Yes, in that, in that particular occasion, if you um, make no contact with your opponent's ball, on the lawn you'll see there are uh, line markers and if your ball then travels over the halfway line between the hoop you are currently playing and the next hoop you are approaching it's actually classed as offside as if it's made no contact with the opponent's ball. So, so your you opponent can't, then right, has the can't. option to call you offside and choose which of the two penalty points they wish you to play from. And when do they do that? Uh, the moment the 
hoop is run. Right, so that was hoop four. Yeah, so as soon as uh, Munda ran hoop four, um, the red ball was signalled to be offside because it's beyond the halfway point to the next hoop. Right. So, and she's taking position with blue. So she, put as well as blocking. Now we're she's going to clear. Now yellow. we're firing at yellow. Yeah. This is that trust. The second ball. This is that confidence in her clearances. Yeah. She was happy to put the first ball in, knowing that ooh, she got a little she's bit of it. There. I'm not allowed to. Keith is currently putting that ball back on. So unfortunately she didn't get much of a clearance on that, a little clip. Um, but now realistically puts Morrison in control of this hoop. I think she'll there's a possibility of that glitting off again here that she performed on well, hoop three. She'll be going for it and she has got no, she, she just, got no, she just oh, went no. straight for it. That time. <laughs> Just for a split second, I thought she'd got that. Yes, yeah. But now, for, this is, as was, again, as I was saying earlier, about the, the power of the centre ball clearance. Because Mandua only clipped that ball, she's now potentially lost the advantage at hoop five. Because although she cleared the ball, she didn't move it far enough away. No, and, and, and she lost Red's control position. of her own ball now as well, with Black being all the way down with us here on the north boundary. Now she put. She didn't really to try and clear that. No, I, could say. no. I mean it's hard to tell whether she could see. I should think she could see the red from where she was, but I think she just aimed to put the pressure on uh, Morrison's hoop. I think she's just. Yeah. So she could be saying, "Well, I don't think you're running this." In mm. other words, and she didn't run it. So. Said, unfortunately, she didn't. So mm. I think that was just that little bit of pressure on. But I think she could see the blue there. Blacks all the way down here on the north boundary, so it's going to take a good positional shot to get Black back in this game or in this hoop. I'm not sure Don't that think one's got the trip. No, that's not quite no. making it. It's pulling it slightly to the right as well from where we're looking at it, or to the left of the hoop. So that's a, a missed opportunity. Really. It's a missed opportunity to, again to get the black back in the game. Jane's opted for the block on the blue rather than move it as well here. So I'm not quite. You can tell the difference in the styles already. Jane's more confident with that sort of rolling in block and sort of that um, that sort of shot, whereas. Mandua is perfectly happy to, to trust her clearances and Okay. So this is the aim for centre ball, stop shot, blue in front of the hoop. Because you've been another look to see how easy the red's clearance is on the black. I think she's she thinks that the red may well be hampered on its backswing to clear the black. By the way, she lined up does, for it. Does black need clearing? Would be my question. Uh, it does need. It does need clearing here, really, because whatever um, Morrison does with the red, again with the yellow so far away, red goes in. Black, black, clears. black can clear red yep. if we're happy. The blue ones. If right. we're not happy, the blue's an easy run. Black just goes in and trusts blue then to do the clearing for her. In fact, James. Uh, opted to uh, to clear the blue anyway. So she obviously felt that the blue would run and it would stop that little scenario playing out. But she has left the position now where she, oh, she will need to clear the black with the red now. So Yeah. She could have cleared blue with yellow if need be. She could have done, but I think um, I think it was the right I think there's, there's no it's the right sort of shot to play. She just sort of open the hoop back up and, and give herself a chance to stay in the hoop. I think if she couldn't get a decent clearance on the black, blue was, probably was the ball that had to go. And now we're seeing just how confident Mandura is with her clearances, because instead of putting the ball back in, 
she's opted to give herself the shot at the hoop with the black by moving the red now. Mm -hmm. And I suppose if she got the contact right, blue might come down there six. That would be absolutely ideal. If, that's, if she pulls that off, it's hell of a shot. It's more than possible. But is it something you actually aim for? Or do you just go, I'm going to try and just, no, just make sure I hit red centrally? But again, a lot of it's down to what the score is at the time. I mean, Mandu is currently 3-1 up, in a great position at, at 5. She'd probably just look at distance. If you find your 3-1 down and in a position at 5, you might attempt that a little bit. It'd be a bit more... You know, a bit more of a, a thought process to attempt that. But I think she definitely went for distance then, just to sort of manage this hoop on its own. So, I was just looking to clear black here. Unfortunately, missed and hit her own ball. So I've got this shot for 4-1, and potentially getting control of 6 as well. Yes, yeah, the aim in golf croquet is you should always be looking at winning, winning hoops in pairs. Um, a good solid hoop run tends to put you in a commanding position for the next two, so okay, winning the odd number of hoops, there should be a, a chance you should win the next even number hoop. So a good hoop run here, beyond halfway, she's in control of 6. Egyptians do have a beautiful style of arm. Nice and composed. It's not trouble far through the hoop, but she still run the hoop and enough, probably just about enough room to get the mallet on it. This is a good chance for Jane to get back in this one now. Good positional shot at six. I mean, she has got the peg to hide from Black, although Black's going to find it quite difficult to hit anything. Particularly hard. Now this will be an interesting decision, I think. Yeah. What would today? you do at this point? Well, <laughs> I think I'll just put. Probably to. I'll try and take position, and I might try and take position between yellow and the hoop. To be honest. Judging by the warmer, that's, that's what Mando is actually planning to do, oh. and it looks a great effort. That was fantastic. That a well, fantastic she's got very shot. good touch. Yes. But from what we've seen. She's certainly getting used to the pace of the lawn quite quickly. So Jane, quite rightly so, opting to put her next ball in. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately overrun that one. So where can black get to? It's, yeah, it's hard to tell just how much mallet Mamdur could get on that, that ball. She may have to come wide, we'll soon see by the way no. she lines up. But Okay, she's not too bad. She's going to go left of the peg as she looks at it here. I'm just trying to get somewhere close by. Presumably blocking yellow or hampering yellow would be good outcome. I don't think she can get that close to it, unfortunately. No. She's having to play at an angle. Okay. okay. I think she may have looked for the, the block on the red there. Rubble. Just as an added... To, um, she went and had a look as if that was the intention. If now, so, it looks promising. Hoop or clearance? I think blue has to go here. Yeah, good call. It was hard to tell how much of the hoop she could actually see. Jane could actually see there anyway, so. Now this is a good, uh, good positional shot here, would be again to be hiding from red. So if she can get blue runnable, hidden from red, She's not really no. tried, I don't no, think. No, she's opted for the deep position instead. Again, when you're confident of money in your hoops, you know, we do tend to go that way if we're confident enough to, to take a hoop on.
again she is, you can see just how confident she is to take that on because this looks like she's aiming to, to put some distance on the yellow here to leave the hoop shot with the blue. It's very difficult to tell whether she's aiming for a red or yellow here but I'll put this in. Actually it may well be red, my apologies. Um, judging by the short gaze. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Hmm. It's a bit difficult from this corner to try and work out what they can see. So that was an attempted block. That was an attempted block. Again, at four one up, confident with your hoops. Well, that's no, this looks like a little well. positional yeah. shot again here. Well, fair play, you know, working the hoop. Can a black clear yellow there? I, I think so. I think it can. I think it dropped just slightly short. I think black can still see yellow. Yeah. So does that mean red will have to? No, it doesn't. <laughs> I was going to say was red going to have a go at blue then, but um, I think I probably would have had a go at blue. Um, but. Uh, Got fingers crossed now that Mamdua doesn't manage to to take all of yellow here and keep herself well within reach. The red could prove helpful here as well. If, yeah, uh, she Mam could she could clear yellow into red yeah. just about, can she? <laughs> straight down the middle, full distance. It's a lovely shot. Again, it's hard to tell from here. I don't think Black's ended up in a blocking position on yellow from where it is, but it's quite difficult to tell from that distance. No, I don't think so. But that would have been that would have been a Brucey bonus, wouldn't it? It definitely would have been a Brucey bonus. I'm looking back on the footage, it's nowhere near. <laughs> it is quite difficult to tell from where we are. So Jane's got a long clearance here with with the yellow, aiming to clear blue. Possible um, hoop. Possibly go for the hoop and although black might actually be blocking that. That is possible. Uh, it's an angled hoop as well. If it was straight on you might be more inclined to think, you know what, I'm gonna have a pop of the hoop here, but it's definitely gotta be blue. And if she hits the blue, she's in a strong position with red runnable sat next to it. But it's a big clearance. It's a solid story. Little trickly one. Yeah. Okay, unfortunately that missed, so So we should be looking at five one here, shouldn't yes, we? Yes, this is um under for five one. So she'll check the hoop. She will definitely, yeah, definitely check the hoop first. Yeah, they all look pretty firm. <laughs> they certainly are at this stage of the day. But um, they are designed also to stay firmer for longer. I mean, they right. will they will loosen up as the day goes on, especially that, if you're hitting yeah. the ball hard through them all day. But they do. They are designed to stay firmer for longer, and they're easier to set at the required width as well. Gauge. Yeah, and they're already the same width all the way up, aren't they? Yes, they are, yeah. It's a very... Rubble? Yeah, well done. They're into... into 5-1. So, this is a good time for, for Morrison to get herself Lovely position with red here. Yeah, first in. That's so that's done the job, hasn't yeah, it? That's done the yeah. job. 
presumably you're going for a, as close a position as you dare, but making sure you get position. You are. are you? Yes, you fair? are. I mean, realistically, the sort of I see as a rule of thumb really is to be sort of that sort of three quarter. Oh, what a oh. super park <laughs> shot. That's the only problem with not being any closer. But if you aim to be sort of three quarters of a mallet length to a mallet length away, your yeah. room for error of positioning is is bigger. Obviously, the closer you try to get, you only have to be slightly out, and the ball's no longer running. So she's just checking to see whether yellow runs, presumably. And if it does. Yes, I think in this position, it's, it's a tough call with this one because she can't afford to move the red. Um, and she also knows that she's got no shot on the yellow with black in this current position. So if she's had a look and she decided that she's not 100% happy. So, she, so she's calling a referee yeah. here, Stu. Yes. Uh, now, I'm going to stick my neck out and say that the potential issue here is uh, hitting red twice. It is. Uh, assuming she's going to try and so the fear clear, is, yeah. clear black. Is the double tap. It's quite a difficult shot to clear that black. Well, I, I'm going to stick my neck out further and say that she can't possibly just play straight down the she line can't. of red and black. I mean, I'm assuming, this, again, it's difficult to tell from here whether the balls are actually touching. Oh, I don't think they are. If they are touching, we may find how, how good her AC strokes are. Oh, they can't be touching. But they can't be touching. They don't look like they are. No, this is a... Oh, yeah. oh, oh. I was um, testing, yeah, testing the referee. Yeah, the referee's brain's ticking, I can hear it from here. I thought I was, a f I thought I was definitely a foul. What did you think? Uh, it's impossible to get red to go there once Black stopped it. it is. Anyway. Yeah, well, the referee was there and made the decision. I mean, <laughs> Black did travel a long way. I'm going to get in trouble now. But, um, but um, the referee was there and he's made his decision. So you you sit happy. on the fence, mate. Okay. Yeah, that's all right. <laughs> it's hurting. It's very rare you can play two balls that close together without it being a double tap. Yeah. But um, as I said, the referee was there. This is where you need VAR. <laughs> Slow motion replays. <laughs> You're getting a bit too technical now. <laughs> We've got a small laptop and a microphone. You want VAR? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We've got chairs. Come on. Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So Mandu is opting to, knowing that red doesn't run, opted just to put a ball back in. And although that's ended up very close to red, red's only just boundary. But also get position. Oh yeah, she, she should stay roughly where the blue currently is. And a nice little stop shot to so just create that little bit of distance. And if she, if she hits ever so slightly left of centre, she might stay in front of the hoop, stop black having a problem, which is what she's aiming for. Just ever so slightly left of centre. To skip the red across the hoop a little bit. Now, I've been reading Ian Burridge's excellent book on uh, golf croquet for tournament players. Okay, is he offering you commission, is he? <laughs> <laughs> must... now, one of the things I've picked up from that is that more often than not, you're trying to do two things in one shot. Yes, yeah. If so, it... there she was clearing blue, but also, well, three, almost three things actually. Clear blue, take position and block black. Yes, yeah. If there's an option of a, of a, a second shot, second sort of bonus, it's worth doing. It's hard to tell here whether Mundo can actually see. If she's winding up for a big one here, I can't see whether she can see the whole 
I would have thought it'd be a clearance on the here. She no, she could, could see, see that. Okay. Could see the it's ended up in a relatively nice position there, as far as sort of oh. blocking the hoop. But yeah, if, yellow, if yellow, Jane block blue. yellow yes, block blue. Yes, yeah. red. If Jane Morrison's got a jump, then Jane's in the strong position here. But she does need to defend red from blue here. Mando is well, good sportsmanship there because Mando is offering to put the blue on exactly where she's willing to looking to play that from to give an honest ah, position ah, for, very good. for the block with yellow. Yeah, that's a good point. Well spotted. Now, what's your, what do you, where do you try and block if you're doing this? Do you try um, and I don't think you really find the shortest shot to play the or shortest, try and come down the line? The shortest route is obviously the first route everybody goes to, but if you sort of play down the lawn again, the margin for errors, you know, you've got more room to, to hit the block if you're going down the shot. Uh, I am quite surprised at that angle. She didn't have a go at moving black, to be honest. I mean, I know that would have opened the hoop for a hoop run for blue, but it's, it's a hell of a hoop run from there. And she had the option of moving black. I think she can still see the red here as well. No, she couldn't quite get past. Now, that's the interesting shot. Because that blue uh, ended up right. in so, a lovely position. That right. might have been intentionally. That's possible. Do you think? Possible. I think she was trying to nick past the yellow and just clip the red wide. Oh, I thought she went the wrong side of yellow to do that. So maybe my eyesight's not up no, to the job. she definitely come right hand side, but that's a great position. If this red does jump, blue's in a lovely position. Now. That's yeah. That is unfortunate. She got the height. Unfortunately, hit the crossbar. Mm. It looks like the black does squeeze through that hoop from this angle. It's hard to tell. Yeah, it looks well runnable. Uh, the, uh, the footage we are watching is ever so slightly delayed, so we're only going by what we can see visually from the corner. And sometimes it's quite difficult to see exactly the line of the balls, but. That sort of hoop seven, the way that's turned out, it's turned out beautifully for Mandua with blue so close to, to eight. <coughs> Effort from Jane to get right tight to the hoop there, which she needed to do. Uh, unfortunately, she just overran that ever so slightly. Now, is she going to try and wrap up the game in this shot? No, she's not. Thing. No, yeah, it looked like a little, a little nudge forward. Wide position for yeah. yellow, yeah. fair enough. And almost ensure the, the hoop shot. That's got to be either a go at blue or the hoop, isn't it? Or a go at yellow to move yellow. Mm. All of them would have been... Uh, <laughs> Well, one of them. Yeah, one of them. <laughs> any, <laughs> any one of them. Any one of would have been, been, been good. Yeah. So, got to, I think she has. Yeah, she's, she's only got one option. She's got to go in the hoop. She's got to try and get that ball through the back of the hoop, preferably all the way through, and leave it just the right side, and just put, make Mando a half to jump to finish it. No other real option. Here. Unfortunately, he hasn't gone all the way through. Stops a, a very simple hoop one. Um, yeah. Mandua has got the option here of just clearing the yellow out of the hoop and leaving blue in the hoop. She could just clear the yellow and run it with blank. What was that? I didn't see what that was. No, no. she just stopped it to, to nip the ball forward a little bit. Um, I think that's to try and potentially move the yellow when the yellow gets through the hoop or comes through the hoop but I'm, I 
I'm surprised yeah, I'm you confused by that, to be honest. Yes, yeah. I, um, I can only assume that she's expecting Jane to push the yellow through here, which Jane Hasn't. doesn't do. Mm. Yeah, I, I, I must confess I'm not 100% sure. If anybody out there is listening can enlighten me on what the plan was for that one. But. So how many viewers are we up to now? I was saying up to, might be, might have gone down. Uh, yeah, it's hard to tell from this. The only information I have is there are 94 listeners. I've not had any updates. That's the same point. number as before. It is the same number as before. I haven't had an update from that point. So are we getting any questions? Comments, no, thoughts. Nothing I can see on here at all. Okay. We've been so informative. Nobody's got any questions. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I expect that's it, Stu. Yeah, <laughs> I expect that's it. So I think this is the shot Mum is expecting Jane to play. Nicely the shot, just again put that pressure on. But this is why blues enters where it is. So this is now why blue is where it is. Well, yellow came to position. It's well, come a little bit far out the hoop here. So we're looking at it as an in off. In off can, has. Can she just run it as it is? I, she's been to have a look to, th to see if she can actually get through without touching that yellow. I mean, again, the, the just sending yellow um, over to the east boundary. Be a, an advantage because Black's in a lovely position. But I think she's confident she can squeeze this through here. Again, I'm just seeing, and um, we'll see the video. Yeah, judging by what I can see now on the, the, the live stream, it looked like it did go, but she's changed her mind. It's obviously a little bit tighter than she first thought. Gone from the red to the east boundary. Mm. Obviously, she wasn't happy that if she stuck, that Jane may well be able to jump with the red. She got stuck. Now, without being able to see whether she can get a mallet through the hoop onto the black to get any distance with the black, it's quite difficult to tell from here. It looks like the wire may be stopping that. Oh, it's black to play. But a red, well, that's true, but red back in as a positional shot is. Uh, oh, okay. Well, that's actually quite good, I'm guessing. Right, no, so we're having we a gone, jump here. We are going for this jump. looks, oh, it looks for, to me from here like Red's managed to block. I think Red is slightly off line. It's, it does look slightly off the line of the two balls. Keith just gone to have a quick look at a different angle. Is it slightly short? Yeah, red's not blocking black at all, but yellow is. Yes, yeah. So it's a jump, a jump finish to, to win game one here. Steady. Yeah, lovely, well done. Nice and finished. So that's 7-1. Yeah, that's 7-1. So, unfortunately for Jane Morrison there, she didn't quite get into the swing of it, but it is only game uh, game one of the day. Um, so so what do I do? I start, re, um, start game two straight away, or are we allowed a break, uh, or they, what, what happens generally? 
generally you would start, especially this early in the day, you would start straight away. There is the option to you know, have a quick uh, toilet break or you know, just a, a quick drink and quick refresh. But normally you would, you'll find most people will play game one and two in quick succession and have their little sort of breather if it goes to a third. Right. But uh, game two, um, with Mandua winning, would mean that Jane Marson gets to, to start in game two. So she'll get to play first ball in. And they stick to the same colours. They stick, to, yeah, stick yeah. to the same colours. Um, so she get the choice of which ball to she can, play? Or? She can choose which ball to play. Some right. players like to play the next ball in sequence. So as Mandua ran with black, it does look like um, Morrison has chosen to play ah, first in with yellow. Interesting. But okay. she doesn't have to. She can still come first in with red. But some players do like to play the next ball in sequence. Jane's just double checking whether, or the Morris is checking whether Mandu is okay to carry on, or wants to play. Ah, okay. So Morris is just signaling to Mandu that as she won game one, with the players have been asked, as it's best of three, ah, to peg the centre okay. to let every, the spectators know who took game one. Right. Good point. So a good strong start for Mandela, but Jane's got opportunity here to take control of Hoop 1 and, and get herself back into this. Right, so presumably you, you, you are just trying to take position here, yeah, I mean, there's nothing magic no, about no, nothing what Yellow does if she plays that. Yellow. Again. And then you've say. got to judge how close you, you personally can afford to go, presumably, yes. based on how confident you are with judging distance. Yes, this is that one way, you know, if you you look at sort of a mallet length back, if you're, you should be confident of running the hoop sort of mallet length away, again, you've got a bigger angle to, to hit, a bigger area to hit where you're still runnable. Some people make the mistake of trying to get far too close to the hoop, and a slight mistake with the distances, and you've got no hoop shot at all then. So you'll find a lot of people, especially at a, sort of a, a lower standard. I mean, we're at a high standard here, but a lower standard will Speak. constantly try to get far too close to the hoop. Right. Yeah, I guess the trouble is that at a lower standard, further away from the hoop, you're less likely to run it. That's also right. very true. <laughs> so you've got to get that sort of subtle blend of the two. Yeah. I mean, and the only, only solution to that is to get better. Well, it's just true. <laughs> uh, Richard Carline, who's just sort of walked across us here, is a, a prime example of he's got a lovely bit of kit that he puts in the centre of the hoop mm -hmm. with um, angles on it to oh, show right. the, the sort of the hoop running area depending on angle in front of the hoop as part of his, his training and coaching kit. Um, it's quite interesting to see just what angles you still can run the hoop at. It's definitely worth a look, anybody in Southwick, ask him to have a look at his sort of his hoop running angle contraption. Right, here comes Jane then. I think she's done pretty well though. I'd be happy with that, I'd, I have yeah, to say. Yeah, happy with that. That's a good start. So just, that's a good confidence for a first start of this game. So we're back in sequence now, so it has to be blue. Yes, yes. So no har will be what? Going I think she's probably gonna look for deep here. So deep position with blue and then clear with black? Yes. Okay. Yeah, again just showing her confidence with her clearance shots. Although that's not massively helpful for her. Here. Almost I mean it is hard to tell, but it almost looks like it's blocked, but it probably isn't. No, I mean obviously you've but got... But she hasn't gone deep deep, has she? No, she's, she did look like she opted to sort of snuggle alongside or get alongside it. Um, so... Obviously you've got the advantages of 
maneuvering your ball around the start to perhaps get a view of yellow, but again, she doesn't look like she's winding up for a clearance. She almost looked like she's saying, no, she's gone, I'm going to let you have a go at this one. Now, I'm guessing it's further than it looks, but it does look pretty runnable to me. It does look very runnable. I'm very surprised that um, you didn't have a go at moving that one. But. So, chance for the early lead for Jane. Yeah, no, it's, Jane will be quite thankful of that after being left alone in front of Foot One. She's got a chance to get herself ahead on the scoreboard in this game. Definitely could do with a lovely run through here and take control of two. Oh, Ooh, that's, that's surprising. That is surprising. I think she yeah, did try to get the extra distance. Didn't look very smooth. No, that didn't. Stroke. A little bit sort of jammy. Hands, as well, the hands seem to be working against yeah. each other slightly rather than Not an awful lot in of fun harmony. Fun. Yeah. So how, how much of the game when you when you're actually in play do you, do you feel confidence either waxing or waning <laughs> or do you just are you very good at just blanking out what's gone before and I, I am terrible at blanking out to be honest <laughs> um, I do have to I do have to listen to music I do have headphones in when I play to try and help me forget because I'm terrible if I make a bad mistake or if I miss a hoop I really should be running. That's a lovely little in-off yeah. hoop there. Having the advantages of the yellow there almost widens the hoop, so she can put a bit more power in it from an angle and get herself halfway down the lawn. But now I have to have music in because I, I, I struggle to let go of the last shot. There's a, there's a lot of mental strain in croquet that people wouldn't imagine. Trying to let bad shots go. Well, we're not uh, we're not machines, are we? No, in no. that respect. Sometimes one bad shot leads to a bit of anger and three more bad shots. So it's big keys. Yeah, to I go. suppose it's, it's you've got to be quite disciplined to not to think things like, well, the last time I was here. Yes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It didn't work. It didn't go well. But Martin's got a. Decent position here with red at yeah, two. It looks okay to me. It does it's certainly gonna, runnable. Yes, it's going to involve blue's got to make a decision here whether it's. I would have thought move red. She can see the hoop, but I think with black where it is, moving red is the option. So it's nice to see Marson's found the pace of the lawn, certainly these first two hoops of this game. That should bode well, give her a chance of getting back into this. I find the, um, this sort of, is this a typical Egyptian technique? Yeah, very, very yeah, typical. It's quite Egyptian. interesting, but it's not something what people uh, in the UK use. No, it's, that's unfortunate, unfortunately she's missed the red there which is, again, good for Jane to get back into this. But no, it's a very typical Egyptian style. They all play, they pretty much all play the same way. Um, have you ever tried one of their mallets? I have, I've had a, a, a swing. They are incredibly light. Mm. Um, so I've heard, I haven't, they are just I haven't almost, had a go myself, no. but uh, yeah. But they have this style and sort of very low down on the mallet. Jane, have a go at this hoop first. This would be nice for Jane to get on the scoreboard. Yeah, we on got the board. We got through on the board, well done. Um, but yeah, they all do. I mean, when you look at... Um, we've had a, a quite a debate recently, um, a couple of us, about um, the difference between casting and planting the mallet before mm -hmm. you play the shot. Yeah. And obviously, the Egyptian style, they all plant the mallet. Right. There's no sort of hitting on the cast, hitting on the swing. No. Um, so the debate on whether 
casting or planting is the preferred or the better option. Judging by the rankings of the Egyptians, I think planting is probably well, the better well, option. Yeah, uh, um, might, be, might be other variables involved, well, but, yes, but yeah. yeah, but, yeah. Like. but yeah, um, no, it's just interesting that the style um, is all very, very similar. Well, I go back long enough to a time when nobody casted in England. No? No. And then Robert Fulford came along and he casted. And um, understandably, people copied him. So now, yeah. and then people copied those people. And yes. the next thing you know, nearly everybody's casting. Yeah, no, it's just strange. When I first started playing, 2016 or whatever it was, um, we were taught to plant and it was a very, very taught style. Um, but and playing the sort of the circuit and the tournaments, noticing the, um, a lot of these other players were actually casting, I adopted casting myself. I think it's definitely good for power. I think that's why. Uh, uh, again, you say that though, but the Egyptians hit it hard oh, from that position. It's absolutely. Easy, but I, I think that's partly down to if you've got a lighter mallet, you can move it quicker. Yeah, but again, that's that's true. I, mean, I think my sits at about three pound. I, I, I'm interested to know like, what uh, an average Egyptian mallet actually weighs. So Black has got. Uh, I reckon they're. Well, I don't know, but I reckon they're under two and a half. So, so a nice straight clearance on the yellow. A little bit unfortunate that the blacks stayed so close to the red there because obviously the next shot was the same shot but on red. Ironically um, Robert Fulford now doesn't cast when he's playing positional shots. No he doesn't. He's just got such a lovely relaxed style though. Fulford. Oh, yes. It's you know it's, it's his style of his own. It is a style of his own. Well he's worked incredibly hard on um, tempo of swing to yeah. get that constant um, and, and making if you make a good strike a central strike on the face of the mallet yes um, that that is almost the most important well it is the most important thing yes. in croquet whether yes. it's AC or GC oh, yeah, definitely. hitting your ball with the mallet properly uh, you'll go a long way so we're going to try and this is a, a quite a difficult shot here I think Mandu is trying to shift red and leave black where it is, which is quite a difficult shot from this position, from where what we can see. It needs to limit the movement of black here. No, oh no, it's going, it's going for the hook. Mm. Okay. Well, for what it's worth, what I tell people about casting is um, it introduces a variable that you've got to have control over. Because obviously you're swinging over the ball, and yes. then when you actually come to hit it, you've got to find a way of lowering the mallet into the ball. And yes. Because you're doing that, obviously you can learn to do that. But you're creating a lot of movement. But you're now creating something that might go slightly wrong. Yes, yeah. It's amazing when you watch casts as well, just how many different types of casts there are. And you, you can stand behind a caster's shot and think, he's not hitting that. He's yeah. missing that by a mile. Yeah. And then it just happens to be straight, right at the point of in, impact. And there's a lot of players, I mean, most people in Croquet will know the Lionel Tibbles of this world. And at no point is his mallet head ever straight. At no point, other than point of contact, it comes at a weird angle and it goes off at a weird angle, but he, he gets it straight on the way through. Aston Wade plays ever so slightly off, off yeah. line when he plays his swing, but he hits the middle of everything. So again, the referee was called on there because the balls ended up so close together, just to make sure there wasn't a double tap. Um, Morrison was playing at a an angle there to reduce that possibility. So she had to clear black, but uh, I was 
suppose, well, I suppose yellow's now got position, hasn't it? So, but this is what a block, at least an attempted block. Do you think? No, I just think that was a, a oh, ball just in. another ball then. I think she'd have tried to get a lot closer to the hoop if it was for a block. Okay. I would say Jane's got to start running these if she's going to get back into this. She, yeah, she, you know, right. she does need to sort of take the game to under her, really. Unfortunately, it clipped the outside of the wire there. But it was the right shot. It was the right shot to have a go, I think. You're right there, Keith. She does need to start. She can see that. To have a have a go and put them. Get a bit of confidence as well. You win one or two hoops from a reasonable distance, your confidence goes up as well. Yeah, what's she doing here? Pushing blue to the side of the hoop, I believe, to, to give her an easier clearance on the red. Whilst taking position. Yes. Gotcha. Doing two things. Doing two things. I mean, my wife Louise is playing in this week as well. She's been sitting on the sofa reading Ian's book as well. So, ah. so she's taken that on board. And trying to pick up on a few tips, and that's the, it's definitely a big part of the you know, two for one, the two for one shot. which is just going to look to get position preferably somewhere close to black and that is a cracking shot yes that is a cracking shot again as we were saying oh i said for the one and two james just starting to get used to the pace of the lawn and putting some good balls in there Do you think there's any danger that uh, Nova will relax a bit because she won that first game so easily? Uh, it definitely is a, a, a thing you have to contend with. If you do find you run away with game one, you can find yourself, as you say, relaxing a little bit too much. You can take your eye off it a little bit in game two, thinking, oh, I've got this sewn up. And, you know, that's quite a, that's a dangerous thing to do because these players are good players. It's definitely, you, you're correcting, there is a danger with that. Yeah, a lovely solid stop shot clearance. Keeps black in front of the hoop. I mean, I'm, red can obviously deal with black at this point. So the real strong shot here now is the position with the yellow. Okay. <clears throat> Blue all the way over with uh, over here with us. So position with yellow. Position with the other. That's a, that's a then clear black. That's a slightly unfortunate. She's changed the angle there for the clearance on yeah. black. Um, but yeah, so yellow position. Red clears black. Yellow gets to go over here. Ideally. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Lovely delicate position yeah, shot. Um, Again, little nudge on the yellow. I'm not sure that was particularly not, intended. I was going to say, that's, if it was, that's genius. Yeah, it's, it is. It, but we're in the same situation here where instead of clearing black now, but it's, it's hard for us to tell from here if black, black looks like he can't see the hoop from where we are. So instead of clearing black, she's now stop shot in blue, and keeping blue in front. And basically, we end up with the same shots we had earlier but the red and yellow have now swapped aim to stop shot put blue back over here where it come from leaving red in front of the hoop I mean, 
points you could try a very delicate snick on black to open but I think if yellow's blocked on the hoop there's no point in that either anyway and it's a very difficult shot from there. It does look like James having a look to see how confident she is, how easy the hoop run is for the blue. Because if she feels that she can't really get a good shot with that blue, she may opt to just drop the red in front of the hoop. The only thing with the blue there is, although it's not the easiest of clearance strikes, it's okay for a jump. She should be able to get enough angle to be able to jump the blue from there. Well, this is going in or through the hoop, isn't it? From the way she's lining up. I think that's, yeah, I think that's definitely a draw. Oh, right. It went for the jaws. Now, Keith, what do you think? Would you well, she's leave the black where it is, or would you try and give the clearance possibility by moving yeah. it? Okay, I'm not so sure. You might have, have, you might have left just that left that. Yeah, left that okay. where it was. But again, we can't really tell from this angle what sort of shot black um, yellow had. I suppose the advantage is um, no, black's in position, so even if blue gets clear, blue could probably clear red, and then red's got to clear black. Yes. Yeah. Is that right? Does that make sense? It does make sense, but it's hard to tell on there. It's really, really difficult from this angle, but it does look like blue runs here. She's obviously checked the hoop to suggest that's what she's aiming for. I Looks like she's, she's got a clear run, because this is going on the ground, isn't it? I think she might be able to squeeze this through to hoop. It's very, very difficult to tell from here. She's going to need a signal one further over. Well, she definitely oh, could see that. Yeah, didn't move red at all. So no. That was definitely for <coughs> hoop. There's not a lot of scope to no, do, is it? No, I don't think she can get a mallet on it to, to be able to clear black. The hoop definitely looks in the way for oh, that. She's got a block, presumably block black. I in think that case. red's just going to go back is, across the Where front. do you do it? Oh, you do it there, okay. Yeah. So I'm guessing that the, the wire must have been right behind red yes, for it, getting to black. Yeah, it did look that way. Because this still gives up the potential jump shot, doesn't it? It does give the potential jump shot. Um, and it's quite a good one to get with red there, if you get it. Yes, yes. It does tie red up for the next thing. The only other thing, that, you know, judging by the fact she's asked the referee to come and tighten the hoop, which is just the jump shots her uh, shot of choice. Obviously, he also had the option of just sort of nudging black forward and, and removing red with blue, but mm -hmm. she definitely, definitely looks like she's <coughs> opted for the jump. As you say, the benefit of the jump is tying red up as well. So. Again, got the height. I'm too high. Did that have a crossbar? It looked like, certainly looked okay. like it did from this. Yeah, this I wasn't position. sure. As we say, Keith, it's quite difficult to see just where the balls are from this angle. Huh. There's plenty of those, plenty of variety, isn't there? So, James opted for a positional shot, which 
she may have tried to get it hidden from blue, but I don't think that was necessarily possible to keep it close by, because red's going for a walk. Black's not going to let it go too far. But it's still going to go for a walk. In fact, the black stopped it going anywhere at all. Oh, hang on. See, not only uh, move red, but she managed to clear yellow. She clear, did clear yellow out as well. Now, that would have been deliberate, I'm guessing. I, it would have been ideal. I don't think that was quite what she intended. I think she intended just to get red a lot further away. She just happened to follow through and hit the yellow button. No. I could, I could very well be wrong. Everybody has a different way of playing. Well, I mean, your hands on that one. It was a very good outcome. It was, a, it was a very, very good outcome. But I do think she intended on getting a lot more of that red than she did. Obviously, she made it so it wasn't runnable. I do think she aimed to get a bit more on it. Than Black back in here. Um, you don't want to block blue at red though, do you? Well, if, that was, if that's necessary. That I'm not so sure because I think well, uh, Martin's got the opportunity or well, the option here. Yeah. Again, if if blue has blocked, if black has blocked blue on red, yellow might actually just come in here. Yeah. So in, in and sense, if it what hadn't, you say it is correct, well, yeah. cleared blue. then it would have cleared blue right. instead. Okay. So you're right, if it has blocked blue, it does give her the easier option of just dropping another one in. Oh, that's made the block. loop shot really yeah, I was going to say, you don't want to block the backswing, do you? Hamper the backswing. Okay, so we could be interesting here, because I think... Amandu has decided that that red is runnable, even with the yellow hampering the backswing. So I think we could find this is a she distance jump attempt. Are you sure? No, she's doing a bit of casting for this. She's doing a bit of casting. It's very, very <laughs> difficult to decide on this point. So I could be wrong here. We should go and check the hoop. Okay. So that's far it looks like she's just going for the hoop. That's definitely not a jump attempt, right. so she obviously can see the hoop. She could see the hoop. It's unfortunate. I think we're going to have to take it in turns to wander around the lawn, the signals for each other, whether you can actually see <laughs> what they can actually see. You've got to be quick though. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, the video footage we've got is on a delay, so we can't quite tell. Well, we've been going at this hoop for a while. I haven't put a stopwatch on it, but it's, it's been quite a few minutes, hasn't it? It has. So we call the referee on here, so obviously, just to make sure. Again, the so she's worried here about touching yellow with a mallet. Yeah, it's nice to see the striking player is actually calling the referee for concern for her own shot. Isn't that the norm? To, not always. Oh. Not always. You do get a lot where the, the opponent will say, well, can I have that watch, please? Oh, right. Okay. Um, but it really should be you calling the, the referee on to say, look, can you watch this? I want to make sure this is right. But it doesn't happen all the time. You do get an awful lot of, can I have that watch, please? Series. Ah, I was going to say, I'm not sure it was in that one. Because you want another ref, do you want a second <laughs> second referee? One watch for something, yeah, and one watch possibly. for something else? Yeah, that's possible. possible, I think. Yeah, yeah, Richard may be looking for the strike on the red, and he's going to ask somebody to watch the, the yellow. Because presumably, in sort of fiddling about making sure you miss yellow you might bevel red yes so i think richard as the the main referee will sit and and watch for the the bevel on the red and he's going to ask uh, begonia of spain which is obviously a qualified referee is going to come on for us here oh. and her sole job now is to make sure that 
um, Jane doesn't hit the yellow on the backswing. Because obviously the yellow will be between, or should be between, Jane's legs here, so Richard may not get a good view of that yellow. So it's wise from Richard to ask for that little bit of assistance. Well, we've got no chance of telling. No, I can't, can't even see, see yellow. Can't now. see the yellow from here now. I think that was the problem Richard was going to have. Uh, Jane's foot was going to be hiding it from him. Oh, this looks fraught with danger. It's a clean shot, mate. Yeah, it's a clean shot. I haven't managed to go through the hoop, but myself, that should, does that finish plumb in front? Let's have a look and see what video footage I have. So is this clear, do you think? Uh, man, this is definitely a jump from under. Our feet have got a lot closer to That's the flag, true. so just trying to pick the difference in the player's style. That's why I got the last one wrong, it was a lot of feet were a lot further away. So it's a, it's a, a reasonable jumping distance. Looks relatively straight in front. I certainly would fancy her to get this close, if not run this one. Has so he got to get over yellow? Do you think or just red? Yellow does look like it's slightly off off the line. Lovely. Ah. She gained well, a little now. bit. Yeah. <laughs> gained an advantage there, really, Two, because yeah. pulled the red out. Exactly. But Harder to yes. get red down there. Yes, most definitely. <clears throat> so that puts um, Lando a... 2 1 in front. 2 1 in front, yeah. Game up. First day's play at the 2023 Women's Golf Croquet World Championship. It is, and what a lovely day for it. A lovely day for the, the starting day. I don't think the weather's staying with us all week, but I'm not going to complain today. It's better on Saturday. Most definitely. So much so, we're sat outside, we're not even in the hut. It's sunny. It? So, if you've got nothing else to do, come on down. Yeah, come down and have a watch of some high quality croquet. Even, even the AC players, if you come down and watch the GC side of the game. So we sat watching the, uh, the AC World Championships and loved every minute of it. It's Were you watching on the live stream or did you actually go? No, I was watching on the live was, stream, yeah. uh, in between working hours and <laughs> everything else to making sure I didn't get caught watching <laughs> sound turned down <laughs> well it's, it's certainly fantastic having live stream at all oh, really? it's only a few years where you know you, you have text commentary that was a and, a, and that was a bonus Obviously, I'll go back far enough that you have to wait and read about it in the Gazette. <laughs> <laughs> and no, we're, we're definitely motoring forward. Um, it's nice, like as you say, it's only been a few years since the live stream sort of been part of the game. And it, it's a lot of people put a lot of time and a lot of effort into um, the live stream setup, which we've got to give massive credit for. You know, put themselves out. And, Take the time to do it. But well, we're we'll all it. very grateful. Uh, we're de definitely, we're we're the uh, at the moment the front end, but there's plenty going on behind the scenes. Oh, they, they sat in their little hut monitoring everything that was going on, and that's oh, just amazing the time and effort they put in. There, especially Alison Moore. I mean, definitely, fair play. So, what do we think here? Is that? Do we think with the yellow on the back boundary it's worth a hoop shot? Or well, is this a situation where you you have to go for the hoop because you're, you're behind the, in this hoop? Yes, yeah. I mean, clearing black is obviously the other option, but I think well, she's taken. that's the option she's taken. But Lou's she, still in front, by the look of that. I think, as we discussed earlier, I think Morrison does need to perhaps think, you know what, I'll just take a few more hoop 
shots here and try and get get some sort of control in the game. Well, sadly, she's she's only actually one run one hoop she was going for. Well, that, Cause, yes, because the other one was an in off, which. Uh, I think we thought it was a little bit fortuitous. I think it may well have been. I'll, I'll, I'll give Jane the credit. I think it was obviously planned. Well, it's one of the, presumably they can leave some things that you at least spot might happen. Yeah, yeah. Even yeah. if you're not actually going no. for it. No, there's a lot of times you'll stand behind a shot and you'll think oh, there's, there's a chance of this going in off here. So you can make adjustments to, to increase that possibility. Right, so she's failed to move blue. Yeah, that sort of. I mean, I know the uh, the red was of a, of a distance, but I think trying to increase her own confidence and get her sort of get her game going, I think that might have been better off as a just a pop at the hoop, just a, you know, a confident go at the hoop. Just trying to tempt this game not to run away from her as game one did. If Jane's going to get back in it, this seems to be the phase of the match where she could, because um, Noah's failed several hoops now. Yes, yes. And she wasn't, she wasn't really doing that in game one. Right? No, no, it's definitely sort of a, a lull in her play. Now, as a player, do you notice this? I mean, you sort of... You do, you do, and you potentially and, and change... Play your... And play differently accordingly. Yeah, you may well change your style ever so slightly, right. thinking, OK. Let's, you know, I'm more, perhaps you're a little bit happier to let them have a go at the hoop now and again because you find that they're missing a few and you might opt to put your ball in to put that pressure on rather than actually clear. So you may tweak your game a little bit. But players like Mandu are capable of just suddenly flicking the switch back on and rattling the ball through the hoop. So it can be quite dangerous to do so, but sometimes you find yourself drifting and tweaking just a little bit. Yeah, but if you're if you're in Jane's shoes, I mean, you're you're not favourite to win the game anyway. Right? That's very so. true. That's very true. So again, she's gone for the nice tight position. Ooh, what's happened there? That's right up against the wire, but from what we can see from here onto the, the left hand wire. Mamdu's just been to have a look to see if it will, if it still runs or whether she can get it across into the jewels. What do we think here, Keith? Moving red? No. Well, red can run, can't it? So yes, yeah, might have to jump a bit of yellow, but it can certainly run. Yeah. It's hard to tell from this. It looks like. On for jump again, so she's okay. So okay, she's opting right. to jump with the blue, which again is a very, very the bonus of that is yellow stuck for five or restricted for five. I hope five. Yes, yeah, well, nice right. and solid. Four one, sorry, three, uh, three, three one. Yes, yeah. And again, as I say, the bonus for that is that yellow's going to take a little while to get involved in the play at five. Yeah, I think you can see the front of five, can it? Do you think? Or has it gone round the side of the hoop? It's very, very... I'm trying to look on the screen from here. It's very, very difficult to tell. You may be, you may be right, Keith. You may be able, be able to get nice and tight to, the, to five. That's a good red. No guarantee it's going to get a go at the hoop, but it's a it's another good positional shot. Yes, yeah. I was say she seems to have got the pace of the lawn well. Mm. So went for a controlled clearance. Unfortunately, missed it. 
which is well, no one's doing well here because she's she's three one up and actually she's not playing as well. No. As the, uh, you know, most of game one. But there's proof you were right, Keith. It is quite a comfortable shot across the five. So you can see a lot more of that than I could tell from here. Oh, we've got a bit of a pitch invasion. <laughs> yeah. well, I told you golf, golf croquet was interesting, didn't I? <laughs> It attracts all sorts, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> so we're going for clearance on the red here. Yellow's not quite Did covered it. Did you play yellow? Yeah. yeah. Ooh. That's unlucky. That reaction suggests he was just giving it a little go, going for that second <laughs> that second part uh, second bonus part of the shot. Well that certainly would have been a bonus. Well, the disadvantage there is that um, with blue gone in behind the hoop, it gives uh, a chance for Morrison to sort of use the furniture to hide the red here. No, that's oh, black's on the west boundary, isn't it? Yeah. Yes. I'm not sure that's quite gone far no, enough. No, not quite. But she can run the hoop with yellow. She can run the hoop with yellow. She's left under a, a big clearance from I think she's just going to play in you know yeah judging by that sort of warm up would suggest that yeah you're right this is just a positional in and saying go on then yeah have a off go. you go <laughs> it's a cruel game isn't it <laughs> it's a cruel game because she knows she, well, she shouldn't be thinking about it, but she knows she hasn't run one of these yet. Yes, yeah. So again, putting that pressure but right on. You this kind of got, you've got to have a go. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, is she having a go? This is a good time to, to find your hoop running. Well, she's in two minds. That's I'm not sure what the other mind is. No, that's never a good sign. What is the other mind? Blocking. She she's obviously far more confident with red soup shot than she is yellow, so she's just going to try and defend um, red from blue. Well, okay. See, that comes from missing the only couple of hoops she's had yeah. a go of, and she's yeah. not quite managed them. You know, that bit of negativity in her head, unfortunately, has led her to, to not take that hoop on. And as you would say, Red's going for a walk. Yes. Yeah. As we said earlier, there's, there's, a, there's a definitely a mental side to the game. If your head's not quite happy. Nice solid clearance. It has gone straight enough, but um, the clearance on the black is not beyond Jane here. So do we think this is a clearance on black, Keith, or are we going to come straight back in? Or? Well, well, there's the answer. She didn't, <laughs> she didn't give me enough time to no. make a fool of myself that time. No, well, she <laughs> happy she made the decision straight away. I mean, I'm sure she's she hasn't quite covered the hoop. And as we said earlier, the little check of the hoop there gives us the sign that this is a hoop shot. I don't think she. Has the referee had to bash a hoop in? Yet, I don't think. He, he did. Did uh, he do? He did tap three in. Right. Again, it's a, it is just a lovely composed style. It doesn't strike that ball until she's absolutely ready. Just a little bit delay before the hoop shot's taken. Good solid run here. Commander six puts him very much in control of this game. 
Yeah. Which is exactly right. Well, she's got a very good tempo. She has. When she gets it right. She's got a very good tempo. Just a little pause at the top of the boat swing. Yes. It's just it's very easy. Yes. Here to just because you want to hit the ball. You you start the downswing before you really finish the backswing. Yes. Yeah. And then you get the sequencing out and you all sorts of trouble. Well, yeah. <laughs> well, you, so you yeah you increase the chances of just being slightly off off the uh, straight. But again, another good positional shot from Morrison there. James trying to um, remove the spectator from the lawn. <laughs> Armando has just put blue in there, knowing that red's appears to be sort of tucked behind the hoop and not got the best shot down. So, so clearing yellow. Clearing yellow. Yeah. And this is one of your shots you mentioned earlier. You know, if you if you get this right, black could well be trundling towards seven. If she wants that second, uh, key bonus second. That was just greedy. <laughs> 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 but yellow will need to be cut. I'd have thought. Yeah. She did go for the left hand side. Oh. Unfortunately, missed it. Yeah, the ball boy's gone to get that one. Unfortunately, it jumped the boards. So this little break while the ball's fetched gives Jane a chance just to compose herself. It'd be nice to see her run this hoop here and get get her hoop running off and running. Well, she spectators need. exceedingly interested. Really. She she needs this one, as they say. She does definitely needs this one. Slightly angled forward, moment. Just to uh, play up the ball. Well, well, done. well done, lovely hood. Yeah, that was nice and smooth. It that was. One. It was. That's. Um, 2 4, 4 2 in favour of Mamdua. So, what do you think? What would you do here then, Keith? Are we sort of looking to rely on the clearance with the yellow? Well, or would you try and go through blue, knowing if you miss, you're only going on the boundary behind? Yeah, I think you've got to try and clear blue because it's too easy for black to block yeah, I yellow, don't, don't you? No, I think that was, a, that was a good spot. That was a good added spot there, Keith. I think you're right. The little, the little clearance now. Again, Mamdu is asking Jane to put the yellow where she would like her to be playing it from. So, just double checking that's where it went off and that's where it is. No, she's not. I think she's, she's I think not she's doing it. the way I was expecting. I was expecting a trundle towards the towards yellow. yellow. Yes, yeah. Now she might have got the same outcome. Is yeah. that, why has she done it that way, do you think? The advantage with that is that she's potentially got black runnable at the end. If she gets it wrong, black should possible end up running ball as well. I mean okay. the option towards the yellow does give the option of Jane saying okay I can't see so I'm going to flick off here and head towards eight. Uh, now you see that I haven't thought of. Good point. Okay so. I giving up the hoop but trying to get the motion for the next one as such. 
will get an advantage in the next. It's a very relaxed style coming into the boat. Just sorting the feet out and make sure she's nice and steady. the question that we've got away through. It's up to 5-2 in favour of Mandela. Blue hasn't particularly got a good approach now to, to 8, so a good position from Red here. That's nice travelling, isn't it? Yeah. Yes. She's got, not got particularly close there. She hasn't got particularly close. Obviously the main intention there was to hide black from the red, but she could have got a lot closer and still achieved the same thing. You know, it's squeezed itself between black and blue. It's hard to tell from here whether it's blocked black or blue, but I don't think that really matters at this stage. These are really difficult keys to try and get any distance on this and knowing that hoops behind you as well. I see people use all sorts of techniques to play this shot away from the hoop. Sort of backwards sweep shots. Right. Almost jumping it out of the positions. Looks like sort of what Mum do is trying to do. Well she's done alright there, but was that might you ask that to be watched? Um, I probably possibly wouldn't for that because it was a little bit far further forward from for the hoop and the only danger was there was a danger of a beveling obviously but um, if it had been slightly closer to the hoop I perhaps got the referee to watch that one. I think it was just enough distance that I'd have been confident that it would be fine. So who's got the advantage here? Well the oh. unfortunate position there would be, would have been uh, Morrison would have had the advantage here with blue not quite making it as well as black. Um, she went the a strange option to get red in front of the hoop. I thought she could have just made it run a ball from the side, but just coming past the hoop. Opted to clear yellow away to stop her. Uh, yellow doing the same to blue, I believe. Because I'd have probably turned around with the yellow and put blue in the far, right up on the north boundary. And again, the advantage okay. with uh, black where it is is if red squeezes its way through the hoop on the next turn, black's got a nice angle to get it to move it away. Right. A little nudge beyond the hoop on the yellow. Mm -hmm. oh. oh, and, and hold position. And hold position and block so yellow can't cannot now see blue. So I think Jane could potentially just push that red a little bit further out using, using blue, blue as, as a backstop. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. She's not really tried to do anything there other no. than hide. She's, again, she's now hidden black from yellow as well, yeah. knowing that she's got full control of red. Yeah. Yellow can't do anything with blue. So I'd be almost inclined here to actually move my own ball. I mean, I, it's hard to tell whether blue's runnable. 
It is really, really difficult. I mean, she could try and, try and just nick red across the hoop. Okay. But what do you think? What would you? The option for me is it's a, she's been put in a very difficult position there. I mean, if blue's runnable, she's got to try and nick red across the hoop to shut that hoop run off. Yeah. If blue's not runnable, which is again very difficult for us to tell from this position, she might be better off moving her own ball to stop blue sending it miles away. Well, she has moved it. Yeah, blue can, can send it yeah, she's miles away, it. but it we'll soon might soon potentially have hampered the go at the hoop. Yeah. No, she's not. Yeah. She's, so if, she, blue, if she had yeah. it, she's given up on it. Yeah, so perhaps blue didn't run it. So again, it's very very difficult for us to tell from here. So clear red and take position. Yeah. And black can take yellow for a walk. Do we think black's got a hoop running shot here? You think black's got a hoop running shot here? Yeah, I'm not so sure. I'm okay. Yeah. Have. Well. I didn't think oh, uh, red James James red very, very tight position. That's unfortunate. The lawn did take that. It just slightly, it? didn't it? It started yeah. out straight at the hoop. Yeah. Well, it's blocked, potentially blocked blue at the hoop. So maybe she will just go. Oh, oh no. She's not going the hoop, I don't think. Mm, or is she? Again, they've got quite a good clearance, double clearance on the yellow and the red to give blue a hoop shot. I think this might be a hoop shot. Apologise for there those that can see better than we can, but it's uh, we are that slight well, going angle. down on it slightly, so. Yeah, giving this a little bit of jump to, to borrow a bit of the hoop. <sighs> Unfortunately, she failed on that occasion. So has, has red got a hoop shot, in which case can yellow clear blue? It does look like red may well have a hoop shot. Do you want to see what I can see? It look, actually it looks a little wide. Keith's gone to have a quick look. Yeah, red's got a hoop shot. Okay. But yellow at blue is hampered by red slightly. Ah, oh, okay. Okay. So mate, how about a, a, a cuddle on blue? Because you get enough mana on it to get a cuddle. Oh on yeah. Blue? Yeah, 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 yeah. It's just hitting it hard would be an issue. Okay. Well, that's, that's yeah. You, That'd you, be your choice of shot here. Yeah. Then yeah. Well, I'll try it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you've got to get a good one, haven't you? You've got to get a good one that you can't. You've got to reach it. Yes. There's yeah. no point giving her a. If she gets close enough, it's, it's quite difficult to jump a ball that close. So, but you don't want to give her. No, but you could give her a. You see, this gives her just cutting yellow into red. It, it does give cutting yellow, but I think it also gives the option of the jump shot as well. Oh, it made it. Yes, it made it. That, that bit of distance between blue and yellow gives you a chance to get up and over it. Whereas a, a slightly off centre cuddle. The disadvantage with um, yeah. clearing yellow through through red is red's likely to take some of the black as well. So yeah. the possibility of cutting it back towards the hoop off the black. <coughs> well I had a few of these situations where the balls are all quite close together, haven't they? You have, so this is again that's opted for the jump been quite successful with them so far. And again, yeah, was nice good. and comfortable. Uh, Lovely little jump shot. 6-2. Takes the six, yeah. And unfortunately, it does appear that red hasn't got an approach to, to nine either. Yeah, what 
that's uh, what they're discussing. Yeah, I might be having a little conversation there about the score, I think. Oh, <laughs> okay, she's unfortunately, she, they've only taken six pegs. Ah. Um, <laughs> so she hadn't got the spare peg for the centre. Right. Yeah. So you need seven, not six. You need seven, not six. Okay, again, that proved our angle. <laughs> yeah, it's another good positional shot. Yeah, so there was obviously was a gap. It's again, I'd almost say she was better positionally than no harm, or at least as good. Yes, yeah, I mean, she's played really well. The positional shots have been spot on. A couple of times she's overran the position, as well, she did from seven to eight, she overran to start with. But going across the court, the position has been pretty good. Constantly up, putting the pressure on. Now this one, we had before where Mandu had decided, look, I'm going to let you have a go. I think she's doing the same again here. She looks like she's going half right to move. She's almost saying, you know what, I'm 6-2 up. Yeah, well, yeah, presumably your tactics, well, both sides' tactics have massively influenced by the score. Yes, yes, most definitely. Now being 6-2 up, uh, she only, now knows, knows she only needs one more hoop to, to win it. So she's almost saying, go on then, have a go at this hoop, I'll worry about the next one. So if she, can, she needs to get this, Jane does, and down to 10. Yes. Which she has. Which she has. That's a good hoop one. It's just a sore. Well, it's a good, it's nice to see a good confident hoop one. It's yeah. Takes us to six three. There's still hope. There is still hope. Yeah, she's gone for presumably position wide from Reddy. She could get she, it. It doesn't look like she's got it now. But it's not bad. It's, no. No. A miss is as good as a mile, I suppose. But that does rely on yellow being lovely, and that. Oh, that's ever so slightly overrun too, by the looks of it. Well. It has. Well, whether it has or it hasn't, I think it's is it blocked potentially black? blocked red at black. Keith's gone to have a look just to double check to see if red can see black. That'd be really unfortunate if it can't. And it's just nice to see such a confident hoop run with the red to have ended up in a position where she's blocked would be red can see black. It can't. No, perfectly, that is, that perfectly is, blocked it. That is unfortunate. Such a confident hoop run with a red to end up in a position so like she is. Do, do you try and nudge yellow? I so think that's her only block. option here, is just to try and... I think she's done pretty well then. Create the block with the yellow. Well, then red. Um, and all red. And all red, yeah. Tempted to send you back over to see if black can see the hoop. Yeah, I, I think with the wiggle of the hoop, it suggests she can anyway. It's good, the good with the yeah. testing the hoop gives she, us that sign. She's working with us, that's <laughs> what she's doing. She heard, we weren't sure, so yeah. she let us know. So, black now for the match. Taking her time, it's just nice, it's just so relaxed. Yeah, yes, yeah, well good hoop, well played, well played. Definitely got her rhythm going. So, that was so how do we sum that one up, Stu? Well, it was quite a dominant display, do we not think? It's a lovely composed style 
very dominant in her, her thought processes. I, I know. Well, she was clearly the better hoop runner. Clearly the better hoop runner. Obviously, very confident in her style altogether because she was op opting for that's okay, I'll clear that one. I'll put that in because I know I can clear right. on the odd occasion as well, trusting that second ball. So she's obviously a very, very confident player and quite, you know, her grading and her way she plays. Do you think she'll have been happy? Well, I think she's the first game. Yeah, I think she'll be match. happy. I mean, first match of any tournament, you really want to get in the wins, the key. But it was quite a comfortable win in the end. Um, I know, unfortunately, Morrison was a little bit nervous about being on our cameras. So whether that played a part in that, but first game of a tournament, you know, we're not, we're never always up to full speed. So I'm sure Jane will improve from that point and get more shots at hoops. I mean, it's, it's, to, to start a tournament of this stage against uh, an Egyptian player of such quality is never going to be easy. Well, she's the number one seed in Jane's block. Yes, yes. And if Jane's ambition is to qualify, then it's probably one of those games where you'd love to win. Yes, but yeah. Realistically, you sort of go, well, it's not a disaster. I'll lose that one. No, no. And sometimes as well, it's nice to get your sort of your rough start of the game, if you like that that, that warm up game against somebody that you don't expect yourself to beat. And the good thing about uh, GC as opposed to AC in this sort of format is you you get plenty of play. <laughs> oh, you do. E even if you lose seven nil, seven nil, you get plenty of play. Yes, yeah. Whereas, yeah. you know, in AC, literally, you might get a couple of strokes Yeah. in and your first game. You might get a couple of strokes in your first game and several chapters of your favourite book. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> well, that's always a bonus. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was thinking, one thing I noticed here, of course, they've got the huts at Southwick, but nobody will be using them because you're, you're on the lawn the whole time, aren't you? Yes, yeah. Whereas, yeah. Uh, I love a good hut when I'm playing AC. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, I know which ones are the comfy ones, which ones, you know, the seats a bit. I suppose it depends on how long you find yourself sitting there. You don't carry your own cushion around, do you? It's a thought. <laughs> I haven't done, no. But... <laughs> well, I like chatting to people as well. Oh, so when Unfortunately, the huts one and two are quite difficult to, to disappear into if the rain comes off. You've got to try and scale the net in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, health and safety, Stu, first of all. <laughs> Although so far it's not, not been an issue, has it? We haven't really seen. We had one stroke went all the way across Lawn 5. Yeah. Um, but apart from that, the stop building's done a job. So, uh, putting you on the spot here, have you got an order of play? Uh, I'm afraid I haven't. Yeah. I have access to one, but I haven't got it here with me now. Okay. Um, I'm, also I'm just trying wondering who, who might be coming on the show court next. Uh, I think so. I'm trying to see what chat there is, because the way we're set up is... Um, it does appear to be chat behind the video footage which we can't actually access from this position. Well, ah, ah, here, we go. here we go. So we've probably been, people have been frustrated that we're not responding to what's happening in ah, chat. Probably so. Well hopefully there aren't too many comments and we can scroll back and as we're waiting for the next game we can perhaps um, Unless they were of the moment, we can possibly deal with them. Is there, is there something you can scroll on there? Maybe. Oh, I can't seem to scroll down it, unfortunately, people. No. We have a, a thanks for the great live screen, stream and great to hear Keith again. <laughs> Who said that? Uh, Stephen Allen. Ah, 
<laughs> oh man, Stephen. <laughs> he was a uh, he did a fantastic job uh, heading the production team at Hurlingham for the world champion, the AC Worlds. Um, he was my man in the booth. <laughs> well, he's uh, he's thankful for you hearing your voice. We do have a few comments on there, but nothing. Uh, Chris Williamson's made a few comments about the. Uh, the shots as the game went on, so unfortunately we uh, we missed a lot of that. Well, now um, we know where to find but them. Now, now it's uh, <laughs> now, now it's visible. Uh, I'll try and put these the adjustment of the scoreboard up at the same time is the key. <coughs> Well, I expect to ah, we have a player and we a good player. We do have a player. Has, has emerged. The uh, if I'm not mistaken, Stu, that looks like Jenny Clark. From that New is Zealand. that is certainly Jenny Clark from New Zealand. Our um, our controlling. Uh, Officer is currently updating, so we should know shortly what the game will be. Right. But it does. Alison's on the case. Alison is on the case. As ever. Our scoreboard has currently changed that we do have Jenny Clark, but Jenny, Jenny's uh, opposition is not being highlighted at this moment in time. The information is just coming through to us now. Ah. It's actually Jenny Clark is playing Helen Covington. Okay. Is Helen Covington from the, the States, do you think? I'm just going to oh, do I'm it. sticking my neck out here. This could be a faux pas. <laughs> oh, that's a good shout, good call. Right. This is yours. Oh, it's mine. This is oh, yours. Right. Alan Covington from there the States. Go, I see. Yeah, it's almost like I've done a smidge of research. <laughs> <laughs> so we've probably got a minute or two to um, yeah. dial up the internet and find out where these people are seated. What do you think? Obviously, Jenny Clark's with us. Is obviously a, a, one of the favourites for this tournament, having appeared in the final before. Obviously, number one seed in, in her block as well. May well be fourth seed overall. Is the fourth seed overall. And Helen Covington is 29th seed. Currently ranked 401st in the world. And it looks as though. Have they actually started? They have started, yeah, have they? they? Yeah. Okay. Blue's balling was a little short, so Jenny's just um, opted for the tight position of the red, but I don't know, they are, they haven't started, Keith, we're obviously behind them. I know, oh, sorry, they're I having a, a warm-up, yeah, was a bit well, I, was, I, was, <laughs> I was expecting a warm-up. Yeah, um, but the way they both struck the ball to suggest that they was... It did seem slightly bizarre. Well, it is one of the things you do in the warm up, isn't it? You play from corner four to hoot one. Well, that is true. Mm. So, what can we tell the, the viewer? about these two players well I know I know Jenny took up croquet I was in AC at Oxford University 
in the 1990s. Uh, and she's currently married to Chris Clark. Yes, she is. Who's yeah. um, twice been AC world champion. Uh, and Jenny has. I don't think she's won this event, has she? I don't think she has. She, she she's been AC Women's World Champion. She has. Has she been? And, um, I think she's played in a New Zealand Open Shore Shield running team. She has indeed. I think she's. Was she not run up? She's been run up once or twice for this tournament. Well, shall we try and find out? She's certainly been run up once. Uh, Say in comparison, um, Helen Covington's relatively new to the game. Um, again, sort of only been playing herself apparently since 2019, or she's, or in fact, since 2015, but she's been playing tournament play since 2019. Okay. So she's sort of, whoa. Somebody, I've upset somebody. <laughs> <laughs> Nearly got taken out there. Yeah. yeah. Yes, Jenny was runner up in 2014 when Judith Hannigan won the Women's World Championship. Yes, was she not runner up to, to Rachel as well? Yes, she was. Yes, so she's two got, silver medals. Got good pedigree in this tournament, that's for yeah. sure. Well, I'm sure she'll be keen to go one better. And certainly capable. She very capable. hits the ball very consistently straight. Yes, is my yes. observation. Having um, I've mainly watched her play AC, but that's you. You can't relax if you if she's got a shot. You may as well assume she's going to hit it. There's a, a nice little bit of chat between Chris Williamson there and Maggie Hayworth on uh, how beautiful Southwick and the lawns and the area is. Well, we can't argue with that. Can we definitely we? can't argue with that. So I was saying with. Um, Helen Covington, Covington um, hasn't been playing particularly long. Sort of took up tournament play in 2019, but she's only taken a few sort of US golf croquet titles. Um, I can't pretend to know the titles in the USA, but it's, you know, she's obviously got some sort of. Obviously plays at a tournament level and wins her fair share and got a fair bit of silverware on the, on the shelf. And she's using a... Is that a PFC? Yeah, oh. she's, yeah she's playing with a PFC. Right, so... Now I don't know too much about them. Do you know anything about the, the technology of these mullets? Uh, unfortunately, I, or fortunately, I do know a fair bit about the technology of these. Um, well, have you got one yourself? I do have one myself. Ah. My, I don't play with one all the time, but I do have one myself. My wife plays with one. Um, and uh, we, are, we are actually uh, the Southwest representatives for the PFC Malik company. Oh, right. So, yeah. I honestly didn't know that. No, but I, pra <laughs> I perhaps should not. Uh, Indulge in that conversation. Other oh, mallets so. are available, but that yeah, they are available, but they are. But not as good. No, they are. <laughs> they are. They are good. They've got lovely weight. They're a very balanced swing. Um, they do make hitting the ball a lot. You get the ball further with less effort. Well, yes. Now, that's interesting you say that because 
I was talking to Robert Fletcher at, the, uh, at Hurlingham and he's had a mallet made which in some respects resembles the, the PFC. Yes. He's, he's got a round head but it's metal and he's got um, sort of two uh, holes created in it um, and he's also got holes at either end, small holes, just like the PFC. Has. Yes, yeah. Um, now, he said to me, and I'll admit my engineering and scientific knowledge isn't up to this, but he said the, the design of the holes is important to create um, what he called the percussion chamber. That's, that is correct. Right. That's correct. Okay, well, you can so perhaps enlighten me from anybody else who doesn't know what, what that means. He said it was to do with getting better energy transfer. That's correct, because you, if you, the way they're set up the, with those cutouts, although people will look and think, well, it's to stop crosswinds for, for those that cast and to affect your swing, which is an added bonus, but right. that sort of percussion chamber, it, does, it stops the effort from the shot um, travelling back up the handle. Oh, okay. So most right. of the shot and everything sort of sticks and stays within the head itself. Right. Um, so you don't you don't gain get that whip from the handle or the, lose some of the momentum back up through the handle. That's that's certainly the idea behind the the design. Right. Well, that's at least to, to my knowledge, that's a significant advance in croquet mallet technology. Then it is. It definitely is. It help you um, put more power through the mallet with less effort. It's, it's a relatively new mallet, they are appearing here and there and they will, I mean, there are still a fair few players that have started using them but it, it does take a long time to, to break in because people have a favourite. Sure. Yeah, so so the, the trimmer mallets are tend to be everybody's go-to because they've been around as long as they yeah, have. Well, and they another are good thing Robert said was yeah. that they're, they're good, or his, his mallet, which is essentially the same sort of design, Yes. Um, he, well, he said about the, the mallets that are particularly um, peripherally weighted, he said they're okay if you've got a straight swing. Yes. But yeah. if you're slight, if you twist slightly, they're actually harder work to untwist. To try and get it straight on point yeah. of impact, yes. Whereas yeah, yeah. these mallets don't have that. No, no. All the all the weight sort of. And they're lighter. His mallet is is only two pounds six ounces. Yes. Although to him, if he feels like he gets the same oomph, if you like. Yes. Even yeah. though it's a lot lighter than the mallet that's he was using. Yeah. That's exactly the point of the mallet. You can you can swing a lighter mallet and get further distances. I mean, I do play with a heavier mallet because I like that heavier. But if you if I drop to my lighter weight PFC, I can still hit hit the ball easy, easier. It's it's a it's just a, a, a smart bit of technology really. Well, I know um, Tom Dewar up at Nutty. Do you know Tom? You must have met Tom. Uh, no, I don't think I have. Oh, right. Well, he's the, the North slash Midlands agent for the uh, PFC Mayors. He's always trying to sell me one. <laughs> OK. <laughs> um, Lorna. Lorna Dewar's husband. Yes, yeah. yeah. You'd know if you'd met him. Oh, my apologies. I have met him once. I met him here. Because right. he came down and, and did a little, because the PFCs are on sale here. Yes. I shall say that one loud. Yeah. They are on sale here. <laughs> um, but I think Richard um, Carline couldn't make it, so I think, yeah, yes. I think um, he come down and, and man the stall, if you like. Well, we're, we've had our warm up now, we look set to, um, set to start. I'm a little bit concerned here because this laptop's battery seems to be running low. So if, if oh, Alison seems to be heading our way, so we perhaps grab it while she's battery. Right, here we go. Yeah. 
blew in. Helen to play first. And I think she might be a shade disappointed in that, Stu. Yes, very sure. We have a few technical issues here, but we'll get there. I'm not with the uh, with commentary, but with our view of the game. So red has also gone a bit long here, but yeah, uh, the Players, captains yeah. come and save the day. Hello everybody, this is Alison Moore and I am sat with Noah. Noah, <laughs> <laughs> Noah hey, you guys. Yeah. <laughs> um, who we've just watched win her first game of the tournament. Yeah. Congratulations. Thank you so much. <laughs> You're welcome and how do you feel? Uh, good, <laughs> actually. Yeah. Good. I think there might have been a bit of an issue yesterday uh, yeah <laughs> i what lost my mind <gasps> and no. came in the second flight so i had to stay uh, in heathrow airport <laughs> oh my yeah waiting for the second flight so i can take it <laughs> oh my goodness yeah. and how d that's stressful before you start stressful. a championship <laughs> i cried <laughs> oh, <laughs> cried, for, cried my heart no. out for like two hours <laughs> Oh no, that's terrible, but yeah. you're here and you've just won. Oh, you can God. settle down now, yeah. calm down. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about your match, how did it go? Um, actually, uh, at first I was a bit stressed because this is my first time to participate in uh, the World Championship. This is your first world? Yeah, <gasps> this is the first time to play outside Egypt actually. Wow! <laughs> yes. That's amazing. Um, while we're watching the games, we're watching Jenny Clark and yes. Helen Covington here. Um, Jenny, Jenny Clark, I think she's the world's champion. Champion. Yeah, right? She is. She won the team. ranked number one. Is she? Is she? I don't know. <laughs> oh. <laughs> um, she's definitely won this before. Yeah. That's for sure. But she's also won the Association Croquet World Championship as well. Oh. <laughs> so. She's quite the player. Yeah. I wouldn't I want like to come up against yeah. her. <laughs> I have done. I want to play against her. <laughs> you do. Yeah. So Jenny is playing with red and yellow by the looks of things. So we've got, um, unfortunately, the names are mixed up on our score sheet here. So let me try and fix that for everybody. One second. Uh, oh, nice. So if you want to just explain what's going on. I think Jenny just cleared the blue one, the blue ball. Then. Oh, nice. Uh, we'll get the, hopefully we'll get the uh, school board fixed shortly. Um, I'll see if I can find somebody to do that in a moment. <laughs> Sorry guys. When I'm over here, some things don't quite happen over there. So meanwhile, we've got Jenny playing in with red. Um, so this is, we've had our approaches to hoop one. It looks like Black attempted a hoop run and didn't make it, but is in the jaws. Oh, yeah, I think so. I think Jenny's trying to clear the ball from behind. She's trying to go through the back. Yes. Oh, nice. Oh, very nice. Very nice. <laughs> <laughs> now, you had a couple of nice shots. Uh, somebody on the live stream was commenting saying you're a bit of a super jumper. <laughs> we, we, we enjoyed the jump shots. I was shots. lucky today. <laughs> lucky. 
it's not yeah. luck, surely. Yeah. We can see you've got the talent there. Yeah, Very Thank good. <laughs> Very good. Jane, lovely Jane, we love her, is yeah. possibly in the bar with some a glass of something yummy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Commiserating. Yeah. <laughs> But she said you played very well. Well, thank you. And she as well. <laughs> she played very well. <laughs> so everybody's coming back in and taking position in this game. Mm. Now tell us a little bit about croquet in Egypt. Do you know how many clubs there are? I think, uh, I don't know, <laughs> actually. <laughs> or how many players you have? Mm, like 700. Seven, wow, that's, I think so. It's popular. Uh, Egypt, yes. Most of the clubs have but croquet lawns yeah. there. Except for like two or three maximum. And how many lawns does your club have? Uh, right now I'm playing in the shooting club. Uh, shooting club in Egypt, Cairo. Cairo. Okay, in Cairo. Yeah. They have two lawns. Um, that's it. <laughs> they have two lawns. I don't think. And how many? Do you know how many members your club has? No, no. <laughs> do you play many tournaments? Uh, yeah, yeah. I play in all the tournaments in Egypt. How so many then, are there? Um, we have uh, the Egyptian Federation, and uh, I don't know. There are one, two, three, like three tournaments, three main tournaments in Egypt in the year. Or four, yeah, yeah. Okay. Running throughout the whole year. And are there women's tournaments yeah. or is it all mixed? Yeah, yeah. We have the women ranking uh, tournament. So you have women's only as well? Yeah. And as men. Mixed. men. And men's have, only? Yeah, we have women's only and have men's only. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. Okay. I mean, in golf croquet in England, I don't think we have any men's only. You don't have it? No, it's only mixed. It's just. We, we have, have one for the women, we have one for the men for the ranking so they choose uh, based on this ranking the ones who are gonna travel sure yeah, representing the Egyptian League now it looks like Jenny's cleared blue to that position um, And that's missing. Yeah, so she's trying to clear yellow out of position. It's, that's missed. Um, red's going to be cleared over to the boundary. Red's going to clear the black. Oh, sorry, red's yeah, going to yeah. clear back over to the boundary, <laughs> yeah. Um, and then Helen will be hoping that she can shunt yellow out of the way. I don't think so, Jenny. I think she's gonna. Yeah. <laughs> she's um. She's talented. She's talented. She's talented. She's talented yeah. Jenny is very talented. Yeah, she's been playing quite a long time. Mm -hmm. How long have you been playing? Me for like seven years, eight years. Seven I years. Can't recall. It. Yeah, like seven years. It's. I think it's fantastic that we as players can come along and after just seven years be playing in a world championship. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> it's an amazing sport. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. very interesting. How d why did you start playing? Why did I start playing? Mm. Um, I used to play basketball. Yeah. Basketball? Yeah. <laughs> One of my uh, That's colleagues That's different? There, yeah, yeah, it's very different. <laughs> <laughs> One of my colleagues there, she started playing croquet, so I was, like, basically, I just wanted to spend time with her. So I kept on going to the croquet lawns with her and then I got interested, I started playing. <laughs> wow, do you yeah. still play basketball? No, sorry, oh. I don't have time. <laughs> Interesting, so croquet took over, yeah. croquet wins. Yeah. <laughs> so let's see, uh, is Helen clearing? We're going for a hoop here. I think she's clearing. And she has yeah. cleared. That was nice and controlled. Yes. It was a good control. You know, she's she's not trying to lose position out of the hoop, so she stays yes, nice she and close. Around. So who was your teacher who taught you to play croquet? Uh, many people, actually. <laughs> when I started, uh, there was... Uh, do you know Mustafa Isan Khil Sarwat? 
yeah I've they heard. started they starting like, teaching me croquet first and then I was basically I was living in Alexandria which is uh, a different city in Egypt okay. then I moved to Cairo yeah, and then when I moved to Cairo I used to play with Salah Hassan okay and then recently Khalid Yunus yeah. wow yeah. So Jenny's back to you. We're back on yellow here. Do you know Khalid Yunus? Do I know Khalid Yunus? I think so. <laughs> I can show you this picture. <laughs> yes. I think because um, yes. Yeah. I see. He's the one responsible for uh, like uh, teaching and. Uh, Enhancing our skills for the Egyptian League. Wow, so how many times do you practice? Um, before I come here, the whole month before I, come, I came here, I used to play uh, each day. Every day? Yeah. You played every day yeah, to yeah. practice? Yes. For a month? For a month, yeah. Wow, that's and determination. Then, yeah. And then, but usually I just play for like two to three days a week. Okay, yeah. but that's still quite a lot. Yeah. <laughs> wow. So we've still not got through who won here in this game. So this is quite the battle. Yes. <laughs> good, good for them. Um, Helen's trying to clear yellow here, assuming she can see it. Oh, got red. I'm going to suggest that yellow might be going yes. through the heat now. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I mean, it's a little bit out. It's not exactly a gimme, uh, but I think it will be. The hoops here are hard and they're tough. Yeah, they're tougher than each other. The quadways. Yes. Yeah. And you found them more, more difficult. Yes, much more difficult than Egypt. Well done, Jenny. So, point one goes to Jenny. So, Helen's going to be up first up to hoop two. Now, nice my laptop yeah. has decided to not work. Seriously? It's a bit of a problem. <laughs> so I'm going to have to go and uh, sort some issues out. But what we'll do is we'll wait here until our friendly commentators return All right. after having their short break. It's very exciting to see you here and uh, playing as well. Though. <laughs> it's been lovely. So I'm for everyone out there, I met Noah a year ago. A year ago, yes. <laughs> and when I was... Uh, here watching the World Championships yeah. and Noah was here supporting, we weren't playing that year. Yeah, I, <laughs> I wanted to participate in it. They told me that I have to pass through the ranking, uh, through the qualifiers. Sorry. You, you had to go, go through qualifiers yes. to get there. To get okay. Through, yes. Right, here comes yellow again. Yeah, nice wow, that's a good clearance. Yeah. So there are two ladies here who are pregnant. Is seriously playing, playing, cro playing croquet in the World Championship, oh, which I think is very exciting. Is. <laughs> and what's great is the club have provided them both with um, dedicated markers, so people to come Ooh. and mark where their ball has gone off, so they don't have to run. And this is very generous of them. <laughs> oh, so I think she was going for I clearing like red. <laughs> it's nice. It's There's great. a lot of support around. There's quite a lot of spectators. It is nice. Yep, Jenny through who too. Oh, <laughs> she's got an extra ball. <laughs> 
extra red ball from the other lawn. Then Helen coming into heat three now. She's first in with black. Come and see if the black one can clear you from here. So I'm going to say we've got a little bit lucky with the weather today. Yes. Because yesterday, <laughs> yesterday, raining, well, right? yesterday wasn't great. The day before, the last day of the qualifiers was awful. Seriously. Oh, uh, I went to see them. You don't have summer here in England. <laughs> <laughs> Just have it for like two to three days maximum. A three day summer. Yeah. A bit different from when where you are. No, in Cairo, the, the weather is very hot. Very hot. Yeah. I have been to Egypt once. <gasps> when? <laughs> a long time ago, probably <laughs> 20 years ago. <laughs> I wasn't born. Um, I think I was born. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you for that. Um, and no, it was lovely. And I uh, went into Haggadah. <gasps> oh my god! And it was it was beautiful. Yes. Very beautiful. It's one of the best places to come visit back in Egypt. Helen's now taking a hoop. So we're two. Two one, and now approaching heat four. Yellow taking very nice very position, nice excellent position shot. How long though? Have Jenny been playing? So I think Jenny started playing um, at university. Um, she was uh, at Oxford and she would have been playing uh, alongside someone called Ian Plummer. Um, he would have been he would have been coaching her to begin with. Um, so she I'm I'm gonna say it's gonna be over 30 years oh, that Jen nice. has been playing. <laughs> I'm not gonna say the exact number. <laughs> so she won't get us one Jesus. <laughs> Jenny went for the heat. She missed the throat. Okay. Helen's trying to clear the throat. Yeah, okay, so that's a nice clearance again. So she's she's pretty good at swing. She's got a nice swing. Yes. And she's hitting straight, Helen is. Which is always around. I've not seen Helen play before. Richard said you wanted me. So I'm going to say bye to Noah. Yeah. Bye thank guys. you for joining me. No, thank you. <laughs> um, just quickly say hi to everybody out there supporting you at home. <laughs> tell them how you're feeling and tell them that you're going to win. Yeah. Inshallah, I'm going to kiss. I was just telling them that hopefully one of the Egyptians would go for the. For the championship. Of course. Well, yeah. I we I so. try and I try not to be biased, yeah. but yeah. it's really hard because you're my friend. Yeah. But in the last game, I had you and Jane, two of my really special friends, and I'm like, oh no, this is a disaster. Anyway. Okay, guys. Good luck to all of you. Well Thank done. You so good luck much, for the rest Esther. of your tournament. Thank you. Bye. See Bye, you. guys. Let's go back to the game now. So Jenny is 2-1 up at the moment. They're approaching heat four. Um, we're all just playing all the balls back in. Helen playing in black. 
and I think that looks like a clearance on yellow which she's got she is accurate she's doing very well um, Jenny's going to come straight back in into position blue's not running from there anyway so is not a threat for the heat Okay, this looks like a clearance again on yellow and that's just to take control of the hoop area so she knows that red's going to be playing straight back into position but she's well, she's wanting much more control of that hoop so she's just letting Jenny come in with that knowing she can clear it with black She, she wanted to hit that much cleaner, so unfortunately she's clipped the side of that, so black has gone a little bit far, uh, and so red is kind of staying near the hoop, so actually now she's sort of lost control of that hoop. Back over to Jenny. This is a hoop shot. It is. That's a good hoop. She's looking accurate. Looks like I'm going to be joined back again by Stu. Hello, Stu. Hello, Austin. How are you getting on? You're doing all right. It was, was lovely it? to have a chat with Noah. Yes, it was. Yeah. She's fabulous. Um, the I think the Egyptians. What I take away from their game is the dedication that they put in. It's amazing. She said she's practiced every day for a month before coming here. Wow. That do you do that before a tour before well, tournaments? I'd love to get the time. Not a chance. <laughs> Not a chance. It's amazing. That is amazing. To that make the time is, in your day. That is definitely dedication. And it does show. Yeah. It does show. Yeah, it's amazing. And she played really well. Very controlled, very calm. You know, made the shot decision before she got there. Real sort of confident in the way she played. Now we're running blind a bit because as you noticed, the laptop for the commentators had a bit of a pop moment. It did, it did. Sorry about that. That's okay. <laughs> so, we have no idea if people can read scores. We can't see people's comments. Okay. So we can't chat to anybody out there in the world. All we can really do is chat amongst ourselves and watch the game. And keep them updated what's going on. <laughs> I will try and get the technology sorted for you soon <laughs> when we're joined again by your co-commentator. Yes, I've lost him at the minute. He's, uh, I think he's gone hunting for some lunch, I think. Oh, that's right. We have to let you guys have lunch. <laughs> now, um, the score is now, I believe, 3-2 to Jenny. And they're now approaching hoop six. Um, I don't know if you've seen much of this game so far. Helen is proving quite the shooter. She's she's pretty accurate. Okay, I think so. We know Jen is capable of uh, hitting the middle more often, so if she's, it'd be nice for her to have an opponent who really put a challenge in for the first game. Jenny's put the black in here, trying to uh, block the hoop and cover the hoop. I'm not too sure. Perhaps the red was covering the hoop. It's very difficult to tell from here. Yeah, it's a bit of a pity that we we don't have the setup that Hurlingham has. Yes. yes. Um, <laughs> with the their dedicated media hut, 
and commentators huts it was yes. incredible the production those guys put on was amazing yes it was it was the coverage was fantastic We'll, we'll do our best. We'll now, as a GC player, did you watch much of the AC Worlds? I did watch. I did watch. As I was saying to Keith, I had sort of watching it when I was supposed to be working, <laughs> trying to sort of not get caught watching it. Because um, I, uh, although I'm predominantly GC, I am I am slipping into uh the ways of the ac you world. can't help but get interested that's uh, the thing I, I, i'm even to the point where i'm now uh, organizing coaching sessions to teach me how to play it I you're can't, I, not i can't help myself <laughs> <laughs> croquet nutter i just love just hope that i can spend enough time on it to do it justice but just having some of the skills in the armory oh. is uh, is worth it we don't like that now Helen's tried to go through the back door and it's not gone all the way through. It hasn't gone all the way through. All it does is it particularly shuts the door off for a straight hoop shot. But um, if blue can't see red, Jenny's just going to clear the hoop. And she's also cleared it to and just yeah. an amazing position yeah. at hoop seven. Yes, yeah. All the pressure's on this clearing shot or to stop red running this hoop. It looks like a She's done it again. And then a little clip further back. So Alison, in this particular occasion, do you think how much benefit is there from just saying, you know what, I'm gonna jump this now. I've put yellow there, I'm gonna take the jump on. I think Jenny will take it on. The the bonus is for for nailing the jump is is obviously high. I think Jenny, could... she looks confident. Well, she's just um, going to try oh, she's just going to poke it through. Yeah, just drive straight through the middle and keep the red moving on. She's oh, unfortunately. Oh, yes. it's so on the wire. Opted, opted for the push through instead. No, it wasn't fortunate. I'm interested to know whether... Um, Helen can get a, a mallet on red to clear black. Oh, sorry, Jenny no. can get a mallet on red to clear black. I mean, I know blue can blue oh. can move red, obviously. But if red can't get a shot, blue just comes in. Mm. If red can't see black because of the hoop, I think she's clearing it. Yeah, she this is, is a clearance. Yeah, is. is she? I mean, she. There's only one. Where? Wow. That's quite some power as well. Good, good strong, right? There was only one Full where she missed it. Hoop, she missed it coming out of heat four, or yeah. around heat four, and she she just clipped the side of the ball rather than hitting it straight and getting good contact on the back. But it was only one in the whole game up till now. Yes, yeah. All the others, Helen has just has been on form. Well, I say it does show us. Again, I said in the first game, it shows the power of that sort of sensible clearance. If you're going to keep your ball around somewhere, you're going to worry even the best players in the world. Yeah. If you can hit the middle, you're going to worry the best. Yeah. Here we go. Hoop shot on its way. Nice. Awesome Very yeah. easy. Yeah. Surprising though, I didn't see much follow through on her mallet. But it still, gl it, you know, it mm. slid through very it easily. Through. It did. No, it's a very, very confident struggle. You're right, there wasn't a huge amount of follow through, but. I mean, it's quite a relatively short distance for the hoop run anyway, so I don't need too much follow through. I think that's gone long. I don't know, I think you'll be surprised. Oh, it's held up. Wow. Lovely shot. Lovely shot. Good shot. So we're now three all. I'm going straight for the clearance here. Because Jenny's capable of turning around and moving red away. So she's got to have a go with clear. No. Still get the balls the wrong way around. Jenny's kept on moving black away. <laughs> so 
So second ball in. Second ball, block for the bonus. Might over, have overran ever so slightly. Made sure she didn't get anywhere near, making it awkward for her next shot on yellow. Yes, yes. I think ultimately she went for the block on the yellow. Oh. Didn't Ooh. quite get the block, but, but she hit enough. the wrong ball. It did, did enough. enough. This, this is potentially that prime example of, of winning the, the two loops on the shot. And then the odd number of the game and advances of the even number of Solid hoop run from Jenny. Unfortunately, he hasn't had to go a little bit wider there because Red was in direct line to the hoop. Oh, I see. I, was, I thought it was going to go really long. Shows what I know. I haven't got the pace of this lawn at all as a spectator. <laughs> that was another good, good position. Yes, again, just... Interested, though. So, Jenny... Jenny just ran the hoop. She just made sure of the hoop. Yes. I was surprised that she didn't try and run it to position because she was quite close to it. Or do you think you have to be really close <sighs> to, to try and run to position? To be perfectly honest, trying to take pace out of hoop runs is sometimes a little bit dangerous because you find yourself, you, you're restricting yourself a little bit. I mean, the better players will always aim to run the hoop and nine times out of ten they go off the far boundary. And don't care. And, and don't really turn care. around and do something interesting next yeah, time. Yeah, they have this. They have this confidence that whatever you put in front of the hoop, they'll move it from the ball that was on the back boundary. You know, it, it does give the option to hide behind the hoop. You know, yeah. if, with a decent positional shot approaching yourself, you can sort of put the furniture in the way of the ball that ran the hoop. But sometimes it is quite difficult to um, to say, well, you know what, from that sort of distance, I'm going to try and put it two foot in front of the next hoop. You're just confident, run the hoop, ball goes through the other side. And move having, on. Having the confidence that you know you're going to move whatever they put in front of the hoop. Well, it looks like we're going to be joined again by Keith Ayton. Okay. Uh, so I'm going to leave you two chaps to chat. Okay. Thank you very much. Well, thank you very much. And, and um, well done on the interview. It's a pleasant interview. <laughs> thank you. And I'll, I'll try and sort your... <laughs> yes. Technology out. Oh, that's okay. All right. That's all. We can witness it anyway. We can watch it. Okay. Very good. Well, welcome back, Keith. No, so much, Steve. What have I missed? Well, I said I also opted for a bite to eat and. Uh, Did you have the burger? No, I had the salad. And oh, the salad, well. the salad was lovely. The burger was brilliant. I think I have upset my wife because she oh. tried to pinch some of my salad and I told her she couldn't have any. <laughs> I said, no, it's my lunch. So, uh, how are we doing in this game? We are currently. Let's have a look. We're currently 4 3 to Jenny. Okay. So this one seems a bit more competitive then. A bit more competitive. What we've seen so far is, um, and as Alison mentioned, that Helen's quite a confident strike of the ball. She's hitting some good, <coughs> good clearances. She's run a couple of what I've seen are um, relatively good hoops. <coughs> so we could have a, a competition now. A challenge going on here. I mean, Jenny's just yeah. ran hoop seven very, very confidently. Right up off the uh, south boundary Ooh. and obviously in, uh, in control of this hoop as well now so Jenny's currently having a look to see where she can put blue to hide it so blue can't then see red so now obviously looking to clear the, the blue but that second bonus is the block I don't think she's got it on the red He's just gone to have a look. I think she has covered that. Oh, 
judging by that face, it might be a little bit sticking out. Yeah, there is some sticking out. A little less than half of it. <coughs> but you do have to squeak past the hoop. It's still a good clearance to manage it. Oh, she's not really going for it. No, like she, oh, I couldn't tell this. You might have tried to go in the back of the hoop there. Is that a common um, tactic? You do see it. If she, if she can't see it, I mean, there are I'm people... I'm only asking because it doesn't yeah, seem easy for that it, distance. It, it's not an easy shot. It's not, especially at the pace you'd need to... She's either got to hit it hard to clear through the hoop and clear the red as well. Yeah. Um, or she's got to make sure she's just a millimetre through to make the, the jump and everything difficult for Jenny. So it's not the ideal shot. I mean, some people at that point think, you know what, I'm going to give up that hoop. I'm going to move away to halfway to the next one to give me some shelter at the next hoop. And sort of almost give that one up. Well, she could definitely have seen red. Yeah. Would you have gone and tried to see if you can sneak the outside edge? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. I guess, I guess the issue is maybe is that even if you do, unless you hit it really hard, uh, you could stick it and it's still in position. It's still in position and you're all the way down here. Yeah. You're sort of right on the north boundary, well out of the That's way. That's a nice positional shot, though. Yeah. What's the pressure on Jenny here now? It does look like Jenny's winding up for a clean shot with ball one. Yeah, yeah, lovely shot. That is, she is good at that. Yes, yeah. I think she she does hit the middle a lot. Certainly hits her clearances as well. And um, again, proving you don't necessarily have to hit the ball hard. I mean, you can't put the black any further away than she did. Red's going in position now. Oh, now, yeah. that's interesting, isn't it? That is a. Uh, if, if yellow, yellow tried to clear blue, but yes. in the last match, um, well, yellow cleared black. So at this point now. If oh, blue, sorry, black, yeah. black was in position and yes, yellow yeah, yeah. Sorry, you can't. Sorry. So if yeah. blue... Um, and then blue just went yeah. in position. So we've got no footage at all <coughs> at the moment anyway. But it does... It looks like red may have blocked. Blue shot at the hoop. And yellow can clear blue. I'd almost have been tempted to... If, well, again, we can't see whether blue can see the hoop. But I've almost been tempted to have a go at moving yellow with the black rather than trying to come in. But if, if blue's blocked on the hoop, yeah. then that's obviously why she brought black in. That's a little stop shot clearance on red. Well, that's, yeah. uh, that's I mean, she had a chance to stay hoop side with the blue there. With you her, think so? Yeah, well, I, I do think so. I mean, she's gone for full distance. If she'd have reduced the distance and kept blue as a danger, it might have been slightly more beneficial. Is black in position, do you reckon? Ah, that's difficult. Again, <laughs> Keith's getting his steps in. He's going to have a look see if black's vulnerable. We do need... We do need spotters round the lawn giving us a thumbs up or down. Well, he seems happy that black is runnable. Yeah, it's, it's not straight in front, but it's, uh, it's certainly runnable. Okay. But Red can see it. Then I apologise. That's obviously why uh, Helen's gone for maximum distance, because she feels comfortable with the back <coughs> Shot. Straight under up. Yeah, very good. Put some more distance to it. Might be enough to make Helen just roll another one back in here, I think. Yeah. We 
Did you have a barbecue for lunch? I did, I had a nice burger. Yeah. They do do some nice food here. So red's close enough to deal with with black. I mean obviously the, the blocks the possibility. I think I think that was what Jenny was more concerned with there really. Blue's chances of blocking red on black. Okay. <coughs> so this is position plus blocking red at the moment. Yes, yeah, and I think that also may cover so yellow can't see blue either. Good point. So she may get a little triple there. Again, this is she's this gonna is, clear this though. Yeah, she's gotta clear this, but this is where what Jenny's good at, you know. She hits this in the middle, she needs that red to stay somewhere near. Ooh. Nice little took off. advantage of the hoop there. She did, she did. But she's capable of hitting the middle, keeping close. Because if she'd have just sort of wandered off there, um, Jenny's just gonna end up having to hit clearance after clearance for the next couple of rotations. Yeah, but well looking at it now. There may be a little it's spot there where she could hide that ah. from both. Ah. Ooh. Well it's certainly, certainly hidden, hidden from red. red. Yeah. Yeah. Not yellow though. So would you say Helen's got the advantage? Yeah, in the sense that she's the one who's always taking position. Um, or should be. She, she, she should have. And Jenny's again, the one who's always having to clear. Yeah, again, if that blue was... Okay, that blue was hidden. <coughs> again. Is, it, is blue runnable? I don't believe blue's runnable from this angle. Right. It does look like she may be trying to nudge blue again here. Yeah? I think that's the option she's given herself. Oh, she's yeah, and block, and block the hoop from yellow. That's a nice little shot. So I'm in a position here where we don't know whether it looks like red may sneak past that blue. Oh, you reckon Red could run, do you? Uh, it's, again, it's very, very difficult from here. It is. Well, Blue's been moved. Uh, blue's been but moved. Blue, blue can move Red if need be. What about Black? Do you think Black's got? Well, we're in this position here now where Blue's just going to come back into a runnable position with Helen mm. knowing that oh, she okay, can just yeah. dispatch Red. So, well, I think Jenny may well have to have a fire at the Black to make the clearance on red not quite so easy for Helen. Well hang on. Yes. Um, <coughs> perhaps red did run then. Perhaps red could run. That choice of shot suggested that red had a chance of running that route. I think this might be a little trickle into the jaws here. Well, yeah, it's not always easy, is it? No, no, it did look like he sort of got pulled out of the jaws a little bit. There, sort of rolled away, rolled off. Wow, right, okay. So, would you be tempted with the in off your own ball here? What, uh, for blue? Like, again, it might no, not be I as obvious I'd, as it looks from here. I think get, getting rid of red looks a good option, isn't it? If, if black we runs... Think black's what say. If only we knew. Yeah, if only we knew if it did <laughs> yeah. It's really difficult from there. Oh, unfortunately she missed red anyway. It's going to hit the hoop. My turn to have a one. It's going to hit the hoop. <laughs> <coughs> Right, Stu's just gone to have a look. See what. 
Ah, so if red's gone, red needed clearing because it's in position then. Yeah. Yes. Right. Yeah. It does look like it's on the wire from where I went. So. Oh. And a little hand of apology there from, from Jenny, but... That was a very... Uh, so where was Black? Black was sort of to the left-hand side, and sort of not quite up against the wire, but certainly not central in the hoop. So Jenny's trying to sort of cut it across. And got a little bit lucky there, but... I'm sure she's not going to complain. She did raise the hand. To say that's not quite <coughs> what she meant. Mm. But Jenny's, with Jenny's ability, she probably at least expected the red to be in the jaw, so the fact that it's crept its way through is all she's apologising for. I think the shot was destined for the jaws and the way she struck it. And that sort of puts... Um, I uh, get Jenny firmly in control of this now at 6-3. Uh, yeah, it was scoreboards against Helen at yeah, this stage, isn't it? it? Is, yeah, so three all on the turn and Jenny's just then Although taking the next I'm backing her to get hoop 10, actually. What do you reckon? I think she's got the advantage at 10. I think she, yeah. I think, I think Black might run. I think Black might run, but I think she's more likely to opt for the clearance on really? the yellow here. Yeah. Mm. Again, when you're playing somebody of a higher standard and you can see the hoop, sometimes it's worth just saying, you know what? I think she's got to go for I, th I think she has. I think you're right. You've called that right. She's just going to go for the hoop. And that's the right thing to do. She won't get to see the hoop too many times. Yeah. Nice and comfortable. Okay. And Blue's in a good defensive yeah. position for... I think it's Blue on side. Oh, I think it is, yes. Yeah. yeah. It's in a good defensive position there for, for 11. That's a little bit shorter yeah, than surprised. Jenny would have liked. I think she'd have liked to at least gone beyond... The, I mean, that angle's okay, but she'd perhaps like to be the other side of the hoop. Because if a, a good centre... Did, well, she didn't try and get closer. Good sensible clearance here. Mm. See this blue could have stayed in front. Okay. Or certainly in line. That's a little short again there. What's that? Ooh. What was that? Was that a... I'm trying to take a really close position. Yeah, aiming for a very tight position. Okay, well, okay. she's in front of the hoop. She is. Do we... Do we have a pop of the hoop with the blue? Or are we no, going to try and get blue or red, again? isn't it? Don't you ever go at red if... I think red runs, doesn't it? Ah, uh, I guess very, very difficult to see that sneaks past yellow, he might be right. It's definitely red she's going for. So that would suggest that no, you're correct. She's in two minds. Mm. You don't want to be in two minds. No. no, you need to walk away and go back, make a decision and re-approach. Lovely. Yeah. Good, good. Yeah. And blue stayed in the neighbourhood. Yeah, no, that's a good, good shot. <coughs> but that suggests you were correct that Red did sneak past the hoop, otherwise she'd have left it alone. So presumably Red just comes back in. Yes, Jenny's just going to keep putting, making Helen have to clear, because... Oh, no. Hello. Hello. Okay. That certainly wasn't the block attempt. It was travelling, which not got a reasonable result. Double clearance and position. Yeah, yeah nice shot. Nice shot. Good control.
now in a position. Well, that's now just where changed things around. It on has. This it has massively. And now Hems has a, a percentage of chances of winning this hoop has just risen. Jenny's having to have a, a, a go at black here. Yeah. Okay, but um, unfortunately not quite enough. No. Yellow going for a walk. Yes, I think yeah. We have our our fan back. Yeah. Obviously, just check and see if you've got any of your burger left. <laughs> I'm pretty good at finishing off burger stick, to be honest. There's <laughs> not a lot left. Now she's almost got a block as well as a clearance there. Yes, yeah. That would have been a fantastic result, wouldn't it? to clear blue here and try and stay somewhere near so so black did enough in the end to sort of yeah. just to take your eye off it you see Jenny went for that sort of mid pace clearance there to give the yellow a chance of hanging around but unfortunately nick on the back well yeah so we're, we're on this down to 12 yes yeah and we've got another a game back up oh, no. that's, that's not the end of the world it does give Jenny a chance to make a decision whether she fancies having a move of it or to get herself interested in uh, Hoop 11. Now she does feel she can see enough of that blue with the red. I don't think that's a great outcome. I think the good thing with that is that it does stop the very simple trundle to 12, worst case scenario. Yeah. It does make that sort of journey to 12 a little less easy think, than it would have been. I don't think blue was central. Are you done? I don't. I, don't. I might be wrong. Uh, this is interesting. Obviously happy that blue. Obviously happy that blue still runs. Trying to put a blocker in there. Yeah. But you give up position with black. Doing that. Uh, you do, but there was a point on the lawn she could have put that in and still been running all and block with blue. I just think she overheated yeah, by a fair distance. About. You'd have to be quite close to blue to do that, and then you risk the double clearance. Yeah, academic now. Yeah, I see how she got a run of the Yeah. <coughs> I think we could be tempted just to roll this in the jaws. Just roll this in the jaws and secure the hoop and give yourself that and just give yourself uh, that lovely comfortable route down to 12. And this is where Jenny's saying, right, okay, I'm going to let you have this one. I'm going to put myself in a position for 12 now to defend anything you put in with that blue. blocked red potentially potentially blocked red but it, again it gives um, something to hide the blue behind it gets nice and 
nice and tight to the hoop. Red might not be able to move it. Well, obviously they're still yellow. Oh, that's gone. That's, that's too far. Oh, that's travelled a bit too far. That is unlucky. Unlucky. I'd like to think she planned the, the black to, to be the potential blocker. But as you can see, Jenny, because where the black is, Jenny's had to go slightly wider with the red. That's a perfect shot, really, because she left Jenny Hafton. And should really be making the decision here, I'd have thought, to, to clear black or blue. Probably black has been the main danger. Is this a good think? opportunity to talk us through how you negotiate 12 well, she's, if you're 5-6 five, five, down? If, again, from what it looks like here, if black's runnable, the red would give the option for, for blue to clear red and flick off towards the team, with it being that little bit shorter. Right. Um, but she's opted for the jaws with blue, so she's uh, concentrating, seems to concentrate more on winning this suit than she's really considering um, developing 13. Because it doesn't look like she's even, and again, realistically, jaws here and give yourself half a chance of developing something for 13. <coughs> She had half a chance there with where the red was. Mm. What was the plan there then? Uh, I think I can only assume the plan was just to push blue so blue couldn't push black through the hoop. Um, perhaps trying to sneak red behind at the same time. It's hard to see just how far that black is in the hoop. Red might be able to move it out. Oh. Well, that would suggest that Helen was happy that there was enough of that black showing, so she's tried to cover that possibility. Jen's just having a double check to see how tight it is to pass, but again, we're in this position, if Jenny's not happy, she's got the perfect blue to flick off here. Yeah. And really test if so, Helen's give resolve. up 12. Yes. Or I, say, you can have 12. Yeah. If you want to. If yeah. you dare. Yeah. Especially with the yellow behind the hoop, she's got half a chance of shifting that black out of the hoop with the yellow. Right. It is, it's quite, it's a bit of a long shot with the yellow. There's a slim possibility. She might be thinking, you know what, I'm going to try and cut off to 13 with the possibility of pushing that blue through black and take that. Well, I'm going to give that a go because okay. I know red's going in that direction. Mm, well, no. she wasn't trying to get to 13. No, no I'm, yeah. Perhaps she was just literally trying to push blue through. I am quite surprised at that, to be honest. I thought she'd have seen, you know what, I'm going to put it up here. Either way, she's first up. Yep, but the from a, a long of, way. Yeah, from a long way away. Now, do you go deliberately long? Or are you trying to play the perfect shot? It's, it's hard, you do. You sit, you stand behind it and you want to play the perfect shot. Sometimes it's wise to just think, you know what, I'm going to get off the back boundary, at least I'm hoop side. But you, you do, you can't help but try to just drop it in. Oh, and that's looking nicely. lovely. That is right. looking spot on. Oh, what a great shot. Yeah. I'm not so sure Blue can see it either. So she might yeah, only get one go at clearing this. So Jenny with her AC abilities could decide, you know what, do I try and put a block in or just put another one? It's so difficult to hit, I'm just going to put another one in. Don't have to do anything clever with it. Mm. So, down to this then for game yep. one. What I thought.
course, I think it was the wrong side of the hoop. It's always difficult from that sort of distance. So, quite a hard fought game. Quite a, some good croquet shown here, but Jenny to finish it off. And depending on how you want to call it, it's technically the 13th hoop, but people do like to call it Golden Hoop. Do they? But it's right. technically the 13th. Yeah, well, one nil. well done, Jenny. Well, Jenny. Right, that is actually it from us. It is. Um, so we're going to say cheerio and thank you to Keith. Well, um, thank you, Stu. <laughs> I couldn't have done it without you, mate. Oh, I'm sure you could. Um, and we're going to hand you over now to Chris Clark, and I think Andrew Hobbs is joining us as well. I can see so them. We'll pass over. over. How are you, Chris? Very well, thanks to you. Okay. Thanks very much for that. Enjoy That's your okay. lunch and a well-earned break. Thank you very much. And you, Chris. Right. welcome, Andrew. Welcome. Good afternoon, everyone. So, uh, I think Jenny will be quite relieved to have played that good positional shot at 13. What's a good shot? I like that. Um, <laughs> yeah, From that the boundary to... Two what feet in front? <laughs> no more than two feet, dead straight, was it? I mean, that's a nice shot. I think they're just going to go off for a comfort break now. Um, during these first games, uh, what I'm always encouraging players to do, the better players, is to sort of start slowly. Just feel out their opponent and see if you can win a match without actually having to play well. Mm. If you can just take basic position run a few short hoops and let the opponent miss. That's always my preferred method of winning. Build um, up a bit of pressure. But Helen actually hit a few clearances during that. Mm -hmm. uh, ran a few reasonable hoops and managed to claw away back from 6-3 down to take it to 13. So I think she'll be quite comfortable with how she's played. And equally, Jenny will be feeling, well, actually, I need to play a little bit better in this second one. Okay, so okay. we're just going to um, have a two minute reset um, whilst the players are off and we'll be back in a couple of minutes on a new stream. Thank you very much everybody. Um, we are going to be right back with you on day one session two which you can find on YouTube forward slash at Croquet England. We'll be back with you shortly.